Welcome, 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 too, too everybody. Aggra- too aggressive. Welcome to That's episode bad. two Dos. of Out of Your League, the Numero new series. Dos. Uh, if you do like, I'm going to do this at the top, by the way, I know this sounds a bit desperate, but if you do like Out of Your League, um, follow us, Follow us. <laughs> subscribe, like on YouTube, Ooh, like me, like and um, wherever you get your podcasts, because it makes a big difference, keeps us in a job. Where do, where do people get podcasts? Now, um, Spotify, podcast Apple provider. Music, um, uh, Podbean. Where would you listen to your podcasts? Well, Apple Music. Uh, Steve Jobs got me, mate, podcasts. from day one. Groomed me. Right. Spotify. Yeah. Yeah. That, Yo, what about Yo Chob? <laughs> said Yo Chob. Yo Chob. Did you say Yo Chob? Yeah. Yo Chob. And, yeah, and no. give us a review, five out of five, because essentially we are like YouTube. <laughs> give us a review, five out of five. <laughs> five. <laughs> you can't do that, he Will. Can. Give us a review, five out of five. Well, don't, don't give us a review if you give us one. No, don't, I don't want your review. No, you need those reviews. No, no, They're no, the ones no, that no. are just behaving. No, we're, we're like Uber drivers, aren't we? We, we need I five stars. And we need, we you need to flesh that comparison out a little bit more. What, Uber drivers? How will we like Uber drivers? What's the weirdest um, Uber drive you've ever had, Mark? Because you're quite a you know, quite quiet personality. You don't really say much. Um, Just sat there and didn't say much and then he picked me you up from one place weird that's and then dropped in me Uber. off. Mark got a one out of five review off the Uber drive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> chat, <laughs> chat, chat, bad chat. Chat was awful. A bit boring, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. And you know you can I wonder if Graham West is on Uber. Yeah. <laughs> Andy Curry. <laughs> we, we were just off air talking about taxi dri- former players who were taxi drivers. Yeah. yeah. Graham West, mm. one. Mm. Andy Curry, another. Did they have Uber in Wigan? Uh... They do actually. They, they, they do there you go, they probably are. I'll tell you one thing, West is a taxi driver, you wouldn't run off for him, would you? No. <laughs> no. If they got older, oh. <laughs> Death. You, you should have to follow up by the way. I know, we should introduce <laughs> we the guest. Because Mark always has the, the knack of doing this, doesn't he? He sort of just starts yeah. talking to the guest before. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. I welcome them yeah. in. If you, are, if you are listening and you're like, who is that sexy voice? That is the voice of, there's only one voice like that, isn't there? Yes. Um, that is Carl Fitzpatrick, Mark. Carl, mm. welcome to the podcast. Sexy voice, that's the first time I've mm. uh, ever been described as that. Well, well I, I, I mean, if I close my eyes, keep talking to me, Carl, because it's working for me. Right, okay. Mm. Good, um, friend, it's good it's friend of ours, Brian Kearney, says I'm certainly like Morris Lindsay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> every, uh, <laughs> Maurice, <laughs> there's a bit of Morris that's in the there. Modern day oh, Morris. Morris, that's what, that's what, that God bless the scenes. Yeah. I once played I Spy with an Uber driver. <laughs> Are we back on Uber yeah. now? Yeah. yeah. No, I was just thinking about Uber, yeah. It was, it was, it was, honestly, it was a, it was a, they drove me from London to Manchester and we played I Spy before it got dark. Uh, what do you mean before it got dark? Well, I well, Spy in the see dark. when it's dark, is it? I Spy in the dark. I Spy. I Spy. The st- uh, steering did, you, did you do it properly? I Spy with my little eye. Yeah. <laughs> Something <laughs> beginning we had, with. Time. We had five hours. <laughs> Something <laughs> beginning with. S, is it a sign again? <laughs> Carl, it's lovely to see you. Yeah, How you are you, my requ- friend? Sorry, you can request not <laughs> to speak to your Uber driver. Have you seen that? Oh, no, I do that sometimes. You, you, yeah. you suss them out quite soon, don't you, if you yeah. want to talk to them or not. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes it's just a little bit of pleasantries at the beginning and yeah. then... Then you get the vibe, don't you? Yeah, silence. Um, it's great to be back, isn't it? It, is, isn't it? feels like it's been a long time. Paul Wellens, by the way. Did you listen to any of our podcasts uh, with Paul Wellens, Carl? I didn't, sorry, no. no I, I got sent the link. But so we've gone, uh, we've gone Wellens to Fitzpatrick. We're doing well this series. This is high high Two great fullbacks yes. in the prime. <laughs> Once a scrum half, <laughs> there we go. we'll get on to that. Well, you were more fullback scrum half, weren't you? Uh, Once a scrum half. Yeah. Once upon a time, I was scrum halfback, half? halfback going through the system. Uh, but yeah, I played more Super League games at fullback. Mm. But yeah, but to mention in the same breath as Paul's a play, yeah, I'm not yeah. too sure on that, Will. By the way, we'll take big it. up Saints. I mean, what a time to get Paul. I mean, how, in all seriousness, Mark, how big is that for, for rugby league in this country? It's massive. I, I was watching it at home. And I think you've got to understand how British teams are perceived in the NRL. And I think British players as, as well in general look down upon a little bit. There's, there's a bit of lack of respect when they went over. Mm. Penrith are a great side. They've, did it get muggy? Did it get quite tasty? Did, uh, we, from the off it did, We yeah. were having a coffee with Joey yeah. Lussick before, actually, weren't we? And, yeah. and obviously with his Australian connections. In their media, it got quite... Yeah, Australian did, yeah. connections, and meaning he's Australian. And his family. As in, like, <laughs> yeah. no... He, and his brother Do you read any Australian papers? Dad. Oh, big time. Yeah. Yeah. The Morning Herald. <laughs> uh, <laughs> morning Herald. But from the off, there was a bit of spice in the game, but I was... Absolutely buzzing for everyone involved with the club because they were brilliant, absolutely superb. Yeah, it but could have been a bigger margin. The way they went about yeah. it, they beat them in their own backyard, and mm. that's it, Mark. There's no excuses, was no, there? No. no excuses. Do you know what I mean? Obviously, Saints had a couple of trial games as a Penrith went in their own backyard and yeah. and did them. Mm. It's it, brilliant. Yeah, I think the manner of the win yeah. was, but was almost better than the win. Mm. If you know what I mean? Yeah, it was a tough game, a tight game. Penrith have been the best team for years over there. Saints have done the same over here. Um, so the manner of it for me was more important, really, than, mm. than anything. It, it was if it, if it had been a loose game and Penrith hadn't yeah. come to mm. play, and, and Saints win, I just always think there's a bit of a cop out with, with, for that. 
I thought the performance was it was huge. It was mm. huge for for Super League, huge for Wello. Um, and Penrith couldn't break them down, could they? No. The two tries they scored, one was off a kick that was, you know, it was, it was a nice kick, but they were probably off the ball a little bit. Saints. So then the last one was re was really lucky. Saint Wellsby's pass should have been a try for me. I, th I think mm. it could have been eighteen nil for Saints. That's how. How, how was it watching that, Carl? For you, you know what it was. Were you thinking, "Fuck off, Saints"? Or were you happy for that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, come no, on, Saints! No, come on, <laughs> no, come look, on. bloody hell! Look, I think I drop. I think I drop. Brush your, uh, who's, who's the Saints chief exec, and message a couple of days. Just say, "Look, we're right behind you." Mm -hmm. uh, and it's, as John said, I think it's been fantastic for the game. And I think the start of Super League season has been mm -hmm. has been tremendous overall. And I think it was it was it was topped off by that tremendous win by Saint mm -hmm. Helens. Absolutely fantastic for the game. First British side, by the way, to win on Aussie soil since Wigan in 1994. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that's a long and time. Yeah. That, that that game has been talked about so much in the last 20, 30 years because it was, I think Wello said the word seismic after the result. Yeah. That was a seismic game, seismic result back in, in the 80s or whenever it was at, at Lang Park. When Nin 94. 94. Yeah. 90s, 80s, 90s. 90s. It's, great to see, it's great to see him at the end of the game, wasn't it? I was expecting some memes what, what of him hell, going round. He was absolutely buzzing. It was fantastic. What happened to him at McManus? <laughs> Have you seen it? No, yeah. Oh my God. He danced onto the field like someone had removed his spine. Amazing. Yeah. Theresa it was, May style. Yeah, it, was. it was like euphoria beyond. It was Will, the, he lost his shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> completely yeah. Are we he talking lost his Theresa shit. May vibes? Or? Yeah, he went nuts. It was brilliant. No, I love that. It was, it was brilliant. Was just, it was Why is he not allowed to do that? No, no one said he's not. Uh, but of course he is. <laughs> but when, it's like, um, you know when you see somebody who, who is relatively composed, yeah, and they've completely lost it, it yeah. was like that. And it's sometimes like, you know, when a posh person swears, mm. it just didn't, it looked weird. <laughs> mm. Eamon yeah. doesn't sound right when he swears. No, no. Because no. fuck. Uh, yeah. <laughs> just fucking what? hell, boys. Do you know what? I want us to fucking beat them. <laughs> and you know, it's just, just quietly. Doesn't quite, yeah. But Eamon lost the plot. It was mm. amazing. In, it was great, you know, wasn't it? Do you, know, do you know what? Actually, that's unbridled joy. Yeah. Like you can't control that. You can't mm. predict when that happens. Yeah. And in some ways, that's the beauty of sport: is that mm. it just rips your ability to control your emotions out mm. of you, doesn't it? I love that. Well, well in Wellow. Well in Wellow. Well, well in, in Wellow. Well in Wellow. Um, and Ellen's the British Wellens. coach as well, obviously. British yeah, coach. British coach, fine. Yeah. 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 Loads of players who came through what the academy start. at Saints. What a start. Um, really? In other news, let me also just bring you the nominees for the Sports Journalist Association Pundit of the Year, Ooh. sponsored by Ron Seal. Um, <laughs> does exactly what it says on the tip. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Ali, of course. Ali McCoy. <laughs> of course. He's already won it, basically, Ali McCoy, hasn't he? He's good, Ali McCoy has won it. I guarantee you, Ali McCoy will Ali's win it. He is good, isn't it? He? He'll just win it. I mean, yeah, he's good, but he'll win it. I guarantee you. Guarantee mm. you I don't, want him, to, I don't want him to win. Chris Sutton. Not Chris um, what, what are your Chris thoughts Sutton's on Chris not, Sutton? Not for me, Clive. You don't like Chris Sutton? Well. No, I don't like him at all. Why uh, not? Alan Shearer, Alex Scott, Nasser Hussein, Ian Wright, David Coulthard, or as I've heard him called recently, David Coulthard, uh, Jason Bell, Jay Bell, and Roy Keane, along with our very own John Wilkin, Hooray! everybody. John Wilkin, Pundit of the Year nominee. Mm. Yeah. And how do you feel? Yeah, just, just like the last on the list, really. <laughs> <laughs> when you read it out with such... You know, do you think you got do you a want chance? To do a, like no. a speech for you because you've been nominated, a bit of an acceptance speech to be what, on the list, as if I've won. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> we, yeah, we yeah, have yeah, yeah. Been. No, go on. <laughs> what, just, what would you say? <laughs> uh, uh, Congratulations, <laughs> John Wilkie. Uh, 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 uh. I don't know if I should. Who won. would you thank up there? Um, I, I would. I, I'm not going to do this well because. It's, it's <laughs> would you thank us for keeping you grounded and? Uh, uh, no. What percentage here? have you got of a chance to, to win it? Um, not even a percentage. Literally, what I've got is a ticket to go to London to a nice hotel. What do you wear for such Trend an fairs included. Uh, black tie. Black tie. Course. Where Doing is it? Halls. Landmark Hotel? Yes. I had my 18th birthday there. Long time ago. It was a Doing Hull Pro yeah. since 1984, right, John? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Has anyone from Hull been to the Landmark Hotel before? <laughs> I think so, yeah. John several, Prescott. Probably. Several. John Prescott. <laughs> John <laughs> two, you got eight, didn't he? Johnny yeah. Two Jabs has been. <laughs> <laughs> two jabs. Do you know what? That's one of the greatest things you'll ever watch. Forget this. Forget my nomination. John Prescott <laughs> punching that guy <laughs> is one yeah. of the best. Oh, Johnny things. Two Jabs. Sorry, I thought you said Johnny Five Bellies. Gas is made. <laughs> You'd want to be on his table, wouldn't you? Uh, yeah, well, that'd be fun. Who's that on your table? Fun. I don't know. I don't know. Not Alan all Shearer. together, you, Chris. Uh, me, don't, Alan don't get on Chris Sutton's table. I'll tell you <laughs> me that. And Alan Shearer. What's wrong with Chris Sutton? Oh, he's just something begins with W and ends with uh, and there's an anchor. Winner. There's an anchor. Winner. He's, <laughs> a winner. No. he's a winner. He's a winner. No, there's an anchor in the middle. 
Oh. Yeah. Oh. I see we did that. I was, anyway, so, I, was, I, was the, I was on the League Express That's one way uh, to get Twitter the uh, views up anyway, Will. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll be voting for Shearer, actually. He's a nice guy. But I think Not, Ali McCoy's to win it. Ali McCoy's to win it. Um, John Wilkin reacts to being nominated for Pundit of the Year Award. John Sky Wilkin Sports reacts. and BBC Pundit. John, John Wilkin, Wilkin reacts, reacts to being nominated for Pundit of the Year Award. I can't click on the article from TotalRL.com, but what did he react to? I, did, I don't think I've reacted. Is that, have they, have they, <laughs> they react they, they, oh, <laughs> This is the reaction. <laughs> <laughs> Two likes and one quote. Yeah. Um, this one from Winston Wolf. It's like winning a tallest dwarf competition. This was the reaction to that story. The guy's oh. a clown. Never in a million years. <laughs> um, uh, not for me, says David Sinclair. And the guy's a clown twice. <laughs> so he's yeah. gone in again. He went in again. <laughs> Just in case. Binky, thought, Binky, Binky, Land, Binky Land says, um, crying emoji, crying emoji. It's not April the 1st yet. <laughs> <laughs> Binky, um, what says, read the name again. Binky Land. That's not a person. It's a bot. <laughs> well, you've been sucked in. It's um, a bot. But also, pl bot. plenty of people questioning whether, and this is, look, this, I do not have an opinion on this, no. but qu plenty of people questioning whether you can win Pundit of the Year wearing gloves on live television. When did that happen? Because well, there's well, been a lot of reaction to that. No, no, well, I'm just picking up on no, the well, vibes. Well, there's well, there's, well, there's well, been a lot of reaction is, to that. Right. I'll, I'll let you into something since I've been working in the media that has blown my mind. Yeah. People who work in the media are obsessed about the <laughs> smallest thing <laughs> that uh, uh, somebody watching would not even realise. Yeah. Like, oh my God, he just totally missed his no, link I into didn't the break. It's all over Twitter. I didn't no, notice no. this. Right. It's I totally all over gloves. Twitter that he wore gloves. No, it's yeah. not. It it's is. Not. No. Put no. Wilkin gloves into no. Twitter. No. no. Don't put Wilkin gloves into Twitter. No, I've got it better things to do, Will. It's funny you say that. So my youngest daughter, who's a rugby league enthusiast, actually said that. So, Dad, why is John wearing gloves? There you go. It's, it's Seriously. <laughs> hey, the, the difference. The difference. <laughs> from the, the, reason, the reason I was wearing gloves is because everybody else has been given the Sky Sports heated g -lays, but I haven't. I thought it was keep the magic in, John. I like magic. I like magic touch. The magic touch. I know John's not playing but it's like footballers who wear short sleeve shirts with gloves isn't it you know like why are oh, you so you're questioning my toughness will will I'm let just, me just, just put let, let, let me just square you up here mate right you are from money yeah. you went to harrow yeah, but I don't you do not know time. what struggle is yeah. try growing up in east hall playing 500 super yeah. league games having 19 operations yeah smashing every bone in your body yeah and then you want to question me about my toughness because no, <laughs> i wore gloves mate yeah. sit does that down. give you permission no. to wear gloves no. sit down or i'll <laughs> shut you up <laughs> That could be a fight. That was aggressive. That's aggressive. Yeah. Fight, isn't it? Is that the in a clip? No, <laughs> I'm serious. You don't question my toughness. You I'm question not doing it. No, it's you the people are. on Twitter. No, it's not, Will. It's, it's you. <laughs> you're here. No, Will, you're here. They're not here. It's got to you're be here. Yeah. Well, uh, Mark, yeah. your thoughts on it? <laughs> well, you dress like Dappy out of them dubs with. <laughs> See, so they've done it, Carl. They've twisted it around very. Mark, Carl, just your thoughts on the gloves. Is that fine? Oh, that keep, 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 keep more gloves. Why have Roy keep more gloves? Yeah, I don't keep think Roy would wear, would wear gloves, but like he may have been cold in there, <laughs> so you've got to try to mean it. It was a tad nippy. Yeah. Um, Carl, it's great to see you. Thanks for having me. Um, it's taken a while to get to you, isn't it? This little chap we like to ease you yeah. in. Right to last on the list, that's right why to, I thought, right, right your last person let you down, so let's see if we can get Carl in there. Um, what do we need to understand about Carl Fitzpatrick's childhood to understand Oof. him in 2023? Goodness, I didn't know I was getting that That's deep, deep wasn't it? Way back, From John wearing deep. gloves to a uh, reaction to... Yeah, well, look, yeah, similar to, similar to John's upbringing, Jim, we didn't have a lot, but we had a, we had a lot of love in the household, and uh, how hard we have it, I'll tell you about uh, bacon shapes. So uh, some of the lads I used to play with, used to take the mic, used to tell them the story that, so when we was young, we couldn't afford bacon. So what we did is, so we'd buy one pack of bacon, yeah. we'd put that on my dad's sandwiches, sorry, we'd put that on all our sandwiches on a piece of bread, put the bread on top of it, squeeze it down, take the top, of it, take the top piece off, take the bacon off, put that on my dad's sandwiches, and we'd have bacon shapes, taste lovely. So that's what we brought What's up on. bacon <laughs> infused bread? <laughs> it's like hey. bacon bruschetta. You guys have got a bakery. <laughs> it's a good idea. You guys have got a bakery. It's good GP job. Yeah, yeah. The bacon fat. The so, yeah, the that's it. Ba ba bacon shapes brought, brought up on bacon shapes. But uh, <laughs> no, look, yeah, born and bred in Wigan, still in, still live in Wigan. Yeah. Uh, yeah, which obviously doesn't go down too well with particularly my kids going to school in Wigan. Uh, I started playing rugby from what six years of age for for Hinley. Hinley Giants they were at the time. Hinley Giants, Hinley Giants remember them? Is that Mark? where the regatta is? Uh, <laughs> no, that's, that's, that's Hinley. That's Hinley good. on ten. That's very good. Uh, as as most kids did uh, did yeah. during that age. I mean, Wigan were. I mean, there was there was genuine superstars. And I'm telling this story the other day actually that I was in awe of Andy Gregory's brother. It wasn't <laughs> even Andy Gregory, Bryn. What? I saw him in Wigan St. Pat's Club. Bryn Gregory. Bryn Gregory. I saw him in Wigan St. Pat's Club once when I was a kid. I was like, wow, 
That's Andy Gregory's brother. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's different. That's amazing. But there was there was there was, me, was megastars. You know, yeah, do you know yeah. what I mean? And that's uh, Andy Gregory's account. They were national Chester. heroes. <laughs> they, were. Do you know what? Matt? They was they was winning sports personality cl club of the year. But they were there was genuine genuine yeah, yeah. megastars and I think that's one of the reasons why I mean there's so many players that that came out of Wigan I mean all the kids growing up they wanted to be they wanted to be I mean rugby players wanted to wanted to play for Wigan mm -hmm. uh so yeah so I pl pl played at Inley uh and then ended up moved moved around a couple of couple of amateur teams uh I was fortunate to play for like Lancashire Northwest Counties and actually played with Kevin Sinfield and you know what at what, 12, 13 years of age, yeah. he was an incredible professional back then. I remember one game at Central Park, because I used to play halfback, I was, I was seven, he was six, and we're getting changed. I'm little, I mean, little weeds that still are, and they were taking me top off, Kev takes the top off, I was like, wow, big chest, phenomenal condition. He then pulls out his bag, a, uh, a tub of sand. So back in the day, they didn't have cones to kick off. You had to have a kick off, you mean, you'd, you'd uh, put a, a, a mould of, uh, a sand down yeah. and uh, how good was that by the way he started, to, he started to mix water with it to get the right consistency oh. to ensure it's the right you know what I mean to, to, to hold the ball this is at <laughs> 12 on. 13 no. years of age no. it's like phenomenal phenomenal professional phenomenal <laughs> 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 12 yeah, 13 years of age it was, it, was, it, was, it was super <laughs> super that, that might be impressive. obsessive compulsive that. <laughs> <laughs> hang on the moisture of the sand is just not quite the right. texture consistency <laughs> John need a little bit consistency more, uh, of, 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 the, of, of the sand and yeah you had a uh, enjoyable or a, a pretty good amateur amateur career played for England school boys and actually roomed with your mate John Jamie Jones Buchanan right Ooh. we uh, went on camp in Blackpool taking 25 lads to Blackpool uh, was that school was a bit was um, a bit loose Carnegie yeah no I never went to that right okay. there was a school in Blackpool where they used to do the camps and stuff oh uh, yeah, there was one over in Yorkshire uh, anyway, so I, I, I room with room with Jamie Jones. Uh, he was a, obviously Could you understand he, him? He's a great character. <laughs> True story, turned up, John. And uh, I played against him, but didn't really know him. And anyway, so I'm walking up to my room, comes out onto the landing, sees him pulling his case up, wearing leather pants. Leather. True story, Outst leather pants Outst at 16 years of age. The confidence of him amazing. was tremendous. Outstanding. <laughs> when you think back to your childhood, good memories then? Very good memories, yeah, absolute, absolute fantastic. We used to play all, and I mentioned rugby league there, I've got in depth with rugby league, but no matter what was on at the time, whether it was tennis or whether it was a football World Cup, you just play whatever was on the TV. So yeah, Charles was absolute, do you know what I mean? It was, it, it was brilliant, it was fantastic, the, it was magical. The Irish, there's Irish yeah, in you, isn't yeah, there? Yeah. How strong yeah. is it's that? It's so, Irish surname, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It is. Uh, is, it, is it a strong part of family? Or yeah, not? yeah. Is so it, all it? my all my grandparents, all my grandparents are from Ireland. Yeah, both sets from from Mayo. And my dad was really proud of of his of his Irish roots, Catholic Irish roots. Yeah. yeah. There's a big Irish contingent in Wigan. There is. Yeah. There is. Yeah. 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 So no, when I was Jimmy Fortune to represent Ireland, and I was it was uh, uh, certainly a proud time for me for my family when I and did. You said you were six years old when you started playing rugby, and almost thought at six that I want to be a professional yeah. rugby league player. We've had so many guests on this podcast who went to Wigan St. Pat's. What is it about that place? Yeah, and I, pl I played a bit. I played a bit of uh, a bit of my amateur career there. It's just when you walk in the place, it's there's an aura about it. You just see all the, the shirts on the wall: Mike Gregory, Sean Edwards, and do you know what I mean, Andy Gregory. It's like something special about this place. There's something really special, and I think there's toughness as well. I think I think something about Wigan people. Mark and I were chatting about it earlier that. The tough people. I think it's a mining town, so culture they brought up and brought up in a in a tough way, which lends itself to playing professional rugby league. Yeah, I, I want to get a bit on your playing career, but obviously, uh, you know, probably more interestingly for everyone now who knows what you did back in the the noughties and uh, you know the end of your career at Salford, we want to focus on what you're doing at, at Warrington. But 2000, you got your first sort of big gig, didn't you? And obviously went to um, uh, went to witness. Uh, didn't work out. Went back to a building site. Is that right? Yeah, that, 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 that's right. So, uh, and, I was, and I'll, I'll tell the story earlier that uh, so I signed for Witness. I think it was at the age of fourteen at the time. There was a pretty decent side Witness and left school, joined their apprenticeship scheme, uh, and managed to play a little bit of little bit of first team. And whilst I was playing a little bit of first team, actually got approached by Bradford Bulls to uh, to go and to go and sign for them. So Matthew Elliott and Brian Noble came to my house to sign me. 
Uh, I was still in the contract at Widnes at the in time. In the motorbike helmet that he rides the sort no, of German no, army one? No, it was, uh, wasn't conspicuous. They turned up in a Bradford Bulls badge car, so it just, uh, wasn't going under the cover. Brian, get, the, the, get the, the badge car out. We've got this guy, <laughs> Carl, and Widnes. We're going to sign him. Yeah, so uh, they came to my house and said, look, been, been watching you and we want to we wanna sign you. Uh, I mean, my dad not a clue at that time. So how do we go about getting out to witness? Because on the contract at the time, said, look, you need to hand in a transfer request. Where do we go about that? I said, well, write a letter. So what do we put? I said, oh, so they wrote, so actually they wrote it out for me. Matt Elliott wrote out the letter uh, that I was going to give to witness. So I went to see Graham West, our friend, the taxi driver. I went to see him the following day, knocks on his door and says, uh, West, I want to I leave. <laughs> he looks He's a big man, isn't he? He, he is a big man. He is a big man, so he gives him that, gives him that look, do you know what I mean, for, for old bro. He says, I saw him been tapping you up. I went, no. <laughs> and this just come talk like the blue man, you <laughs> that I want to leave all of a sudden. <laughs> anyway, so I was like, gave him the letter and read the letter and obviously they didn't, uh, didn't uh, let me go. Uh, and you know, actually went and signed because they couldn't get me. Paul Deacon. Yeah, so at the time, Paul it's was playing for Oldham Burrs, who went bust. Was, yeah. uh, so then they brought... We brought Paul in. Decent good signing. business. It was a great business. Great business. It? <laughs> it was a great bit of business. So when you were back Paul, on... Paul, Paul went to an unbelievable career and I went to the building site. No, no. <laughs> but when you were back on the building site, did you think it was yeah, game so, over? Look, I think it's probably one of the best educations I've ever had in my life. Will, and it's something that I probably still reflect on to this day that mm. played a bit of first team, got a bit of... Luke, I was not an average player, but probably got a bit above my station, uh, thinking I was better than I was, started angry with senior players, drinking, and wasn't as professional as, as I should have been and they and they actually moved me on. So one minute I'm a full-time rugby player, the next I'm working at the side of a motorway laying flags with my dad and my brother. I'm I was going to say, like, so we bricky, what we do, what sort wow, of things? Yeah, I, uh, I, was, I was laying flags. Do you know the matrix box at the side of the motorway? I was actually laying flags up to that. So important stuff. It was important stuff. Were you stuff. getting paid more on the building site than you were at Widnes? Uh, I think it might have been actually. <laughs> yeah. But that, that was like one minute I'm like, a professional rugby player, say, and the next time working at the side How of the well motorway. Do you know what? Do you know what, John? It was I, at the time I probably went through a mental breakdown. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I was just yeah, in. Yeah. I was in a dark. I was in a really, really dark place. Uh, like wandering the streets, just thinking. Because all I wanted to be since six years of age mm. is a professional rugby player, and it had been taken away from me. And as well as working on a building site, I then went working in the biscuit factory. Uh, I worked for a home loans company. Uh, I, had a, a, I had a, I had a different jobs, but you, I just you, wanted to be a professional. Lost? Yeah, I was lost, John. I wasn't, yeah. I wasn't in a good place, and there wasn't a welfare system like there is in place today. Because yeah. basically, with just cut me, and that was it. I was just, I, I, I was just gone, and I went playing at Swinton. Mm. Uh, I played half a half a uh, season at Swinton, and Salford came knocking. But did, did, it's did, a massive did, character test, that isn't it? It, it is. Because when you're going in a situation like that, sink, you know, sink or swim. Do you know what, Mark? What? And I was thinking about this the other day, actually. I was filling out an application form. I was saying I was going from job to job to job. And one of the application forms, one of the questions was, what's your profession? And, and I'm like saying to my mum, I said, what do I put here? And said, you're a rugby league player. That's what you are. Put that down. Mm. I thought, do you, know, do you know what I mean? I thought, all right, okay. Do you know what I mean? I have a bit of belief. I have a bit yeah. of belief in me. Yeah. A bit of belief. So I thought, do you know what? I can, I can steal this. Because I'd, I'd not really had a setback up until then. Because I played... Like I said earlier, Langshire, North West Counties, England school boys. You in the southwest of France as well? Yeah, I, play, I played a short period in France, which was common back That's in the day. quite a transition from the southwest of France to Hated Swinton. it. Hated yeah. it. I wasn't, no, yeah, didn't, didn't like it at all. Beautiful part of the world. You're down near St. Sebastian, weren't you, or somewhere? Pardon? I was in the, uh, in the Basque I was right in, between, in between Toulouse and Bordeaux. There's not, going, not much going on there for an 18-year-old yeah. lad, I tell right. you. Not much going on. But it's quite common back in the day, that because the seasons don't run parallel, so young players in the off-season go and play over in France. Mm. Doesn't happen as happen as much now, so yeah. So they caught me. I went to, I went to, uh, I went to, went to Swinton. Was playing part time. Continued to to play full time, mm. and then I got an opportunity to go to Salford. I think it was twenty at the time. So at the time it was the under twenty ones. So I continued to pl work full time and play for Salford under twenty ones. Uh, got to the end of the season at, at, at Salford, and Carl Harrison said, "You know what? You've been brilliant. I want to bring you full." I remember the phone call. I want to bring you full time. I thought, Yes, do you know what I mean, I'm going to get, take this opportunity with both fans. Mm. Do you know what I mean? I'm going to make the most of it. And I was going away at the weekend. He said, Look, you go away. And then Steve Sims, the director of rugby at the time, said, Go away. Steve Sims will start your contract out when you, when you come back. Probably going to Butlins or something like that. Comes back after the weekend, goes to see Steve, said, Sorry, mate, there's no money left. I was like, Oof, just totally yeah. devastated. Because yeah. all I wanted to be was professional belief play, just totally devastated. So I said, Right, Steve, I'll tell you what I'll do. He said, I will come and train the full pre-season 
without pay. If you can, if you can find some money from somewhere at the end of pre-season, great. If not, no worries, I show you my worth. So I did the full free, uh, pre-season without pay. I was the first one in, I was the last one out. out. I was going on my days off. I just made it virtually impossible for them not to give me a contract come the end of the pre-season. And they did. Now, it was only seven grand, but at the time I was still living at home with mum and dad, so I wow. could get by. And I've, again, I've, I've taken those, those learnings into my career now, and at the back end of my career, it's something similar I did. Well, the belief thing's interesting for me. You know, when you're filling out that application mm. and you've got a choice what to put, just listening to that, the fact that you had the confidence to actually put yeah. rugby league player in. Yeah. Like the belief is that was there. Yeah, or was that yeah. coaxed out of you by, by your mum? I was, think she, so. was she giving you a giddy up saying, come on, mate, you're... No, it was just, it, I think it was just a matter of fact. It was just, that's yeah. what you are. Yeah, yeah. That's what, there's no two ways about it. That's what, yeah, my mum and dad have been unbelievably supportive and I wouldn't be where I am without mum and dad's support. Yeah. I mean, they're the, uh, the epitome of working class. My dad worked on, a building, on the building site till he was 72. My mum in a biscuit factory. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Incredibly, incredibly hard working. And I think that's what, when you mentioned earlier about, about you know I mean, what it was like growing up and what was it telling me? Probably the role models I had, in particular my my mum and my and my dad, that just unbelievably hard working. My dad used to pride himself on never another day off work. Mm. And so then you took that into that pre-season, I bet, didn't you? Yeah, I did. You had the talent, but then you had this setback. You had to show a bit of resilience, and then probably those un unconscious or subconscious learnings from a young age, your mum and dad, getting up early, grafting. You took that into your, that pre-season, yeah. which probably. Yeah, you your, and do you know what? Career. I remember it. Some of the senior players were taking the piss out of me because I'd be the first in, I'd be last out. I'd come on a day off, just doing extras, just doing extras, doing extras. But I didn't care. I was just totally driven and focused mm -hmm. on, on getting that contract. There's a bit of bluff as well, in there, in that situation. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. When you get there and you're questioning, you know, what you're doing, you know, you're doing this for nothing, and you've got to have a bit of bravado about it. You have to. You have to. You know, you've yeah. got to. Even if you don't believe it, you've got to. You yeah, project to, confidence, don't you? Like die with a lie, really. Is, is you know what I mean? It, it's not going exactly how we wanted, but you've got to turn up and commit to a pre-season. Yeah. yeah. I, I just admire people who can just just switch that on, you know, mm. not show any insecurity and just go after it. it. Sounds like you would have been desperately unhappy had you not made it in rugby league. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I've been I've been obsessed with the sport since since six years of age, and I still am today. I'm a bit of a rugby league anorak. Mm. Uh, but fortunately, things things panned out. How, how do you survive on seven grand a year? Because that's what Salford were paying you. I mean, it's all well and good thinking I want to get there, but you still got to live. But right? you think about me outgoings. I was living at home with mum and dad, so yeah. I wasn't. Do you know what I mean? I just I sponge off them basically. Right. <laughs> <laughs> ideal. That ideal. Yeah. But the money looks after itself. Are on that kind of well, they're on yeah. that kind of money. Seven grand a year. Yeah, yeah. I was on eight or ten when I was a professional mm. at seventeen, eighteen. It's not a lot of money. You just. Yeah. Well, yeah. There's no, no choice really. Is I there? played for Great Britain on seventeen and a half grand a year. Did you? Well, another ten's nice, isn't it? Do you yeah. Know? But I mean, yeah. do you know what I'm saying? It's mm. the, the perception that that you know all young athletes go a certain way to earn money is 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 crazy. You know, yeah. it's like that in all sports, probably yeah, yeah. except for football. There'll be loads of Olympic athletes who are on sponsorships of peanuts, but. Yeah. They just believe in what they're doing and what they're working towards, and that's that's what drives them. Yeah. Look, seven grand a year to you. Well, I mean, seven <laughs> grand to anyone. Seven weekend. grand a year to it's anyone a buddy, is it's not. a bloody round of drinks, you, Carl. You, you can't, 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 you can't, he gets paid seven grand a year. Mark Hotel. Yeah. But so, you know, look, you had this great career, really, because you stayed in Super League and played right up until what was it, 2010 for Yeah, for 2020, yeah. And, and I want to really sort of move it on to what you're doing now. Did, did you have any idea what you wanted to do post rugby? Do you know what? I always had an interest in business. I'm quite entrepreneurial. I got involved with a supplement company. Uh, I was putting events on, charity events on. So I had a bit of an, inter an entrepreneurial spirit into business. Uh, but I probably wasn't sure what I really wanted to do. I was aware of what opportunities are out there because, mm. and I find this now with a lot of lads that, I mean, since being, I mean, six years of age, you want to be a rugby player and nothing else. Mm. So when you come into the end, you're thinking, goodness, what can I do? What can I do? And I went away at the, uh, it was a 2008 World Cup, played for Ireland, and they were sponsored by Carnegie, Leeds Carnegie as it was at the time, and they were doing discounts on courses. So we ended up doing a sports performance degree. So I ended up training uh, about twice a week, I'd go over to, I'd go over to Leeds and, and did, a, did a sports performance uh, degree with a view to getting into strength and conditioning, sports science. Uh, so I, I completed the degree, I graduated, and then obviously joined Warrington again in a, in a, in a voluntary capacity to gain, to gain work experience. 
Uh, so similar I, to when you did your first pre-season, you yeah. said, I'll do this for free yeah. and show you what I can Cause do. Because I, I, I thought, look, surely it wouldn't knock me back. I mean, and I've told this story before, I've, I surely wouldn't knock me back if I offered my services free of charge. Mm. Although this time I've got two kids, a wife and a mortgage, so it's a little bit, <laughs> a little bit where, trickier. Where, where, where does that come from in you, Carl? Because that's a theme, isn't it? Where you've gone, like, Just look, let drive. me prove myself yeah. for nothing. A, yeah. and, then, and then you've and you've got that confidence that once you get in front of people, yeah. that they'll buy into you. Yeah, right? yeah. I, I think it's just, again, I think it's me upbringing just in terms of just hard work, just uh, driven, just do, and I say this now that, to the to my team at Warrington is just make it happen. Do whatever it takes. Nothing illegal or something that's not really moral, but whatever it takes, mm. just make it happen. Just do it and being obsessed about that about that goal. How how quick does your mind work? How active is your mind? It's I'm listening to you <laughs> speak now and I'm like it, it when, whenever I've come across you Fizzy, like I've always felt like you're operating at a pace quicker than people around you at times. And just when you're describing those team meetings yeah. at Warrington, like how Fast paced is your mind. It's, how mu how much stimulus do you need to yeah, be Yeah, it's, it's it's funny that John, and it, and it is. It's it's. It, I very rarely switch off. It takes me four sittings to watch a film. Genuinely, I cannot sit down and watch a film because as soon as I, I slow down, pff, I just fall asleep because I'm operating at that at that at that speed all the time. And I don't think it's healthy to operate at that that speed all the time. And something I've taken to recently is, is meditating since 2019, just to try and slow myself down a little bit and be a little bit a bit more a bit more present. Uh, what does that I, do for you? I think it's, it's, you know what it's good. It, it helps me be centered. It helps me probably make uh, better decisions uh, with more with more clarity. Mm -hmm. But I understand what you're saying, John. That I, I do. I very rarely switch off. I very rarely switch off. It is boom all the time when you how, how often do you meditate for uh 10 minutes right between 10 between seven ten minutes on the on the car map daily journey a guided meditation yes yeah yeah do you find you, your mind's more free and you can think about more creatively when you're meditating because i find if i'm in bed or if i'm on a massage table or whatever i think of when things that i wouldn't table. What kind of massage? Well, do? Whereabouts? Well, that's One time good. massage on bridge. Yeah, yeah. This was off off my not a professional that sportsman anymore. Um, I find my mind's more free and creative. And I think of different opportunities, propositions. Yeah. And I find that when I'm in my day to day, just in my lane, I don't I don't think like that. Yeah. You the same? Yeah, I think I think there I think there is a bit of that, and I think uh, different ideas come to me at at different times and I'm forever punching stuff in my notes or taking mm. pictures because I'm constantly always thinking about, about, the next th about the next thing but yeah it does certainly help my creativity mm. with uh, getting some edited well, I'd, I'd like to on without labouring this point I'd like to you know when you meet somebody and I'd like to understand like, if I could listen to what you're thinking you're one of the people who I'd like to listen to what you're thinking because you know when I'm speaking to you I, I know there's more going on do you know what I yeah, mean yeah yeah as an observation yeah as somebody right I'm quite fast paced as in I th I think a lot I don't verbally I don't say a lot of what I think but I'm often yeah you know a lot of do you think Mark's million, fast paced yeah Mark no Mark's Mark's I, more <laughs> conservative no more conservative in, 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 similar to that John and and I think this is quite common with a lot of professional athletes is and some of that I actually quite I struggle with is I'm never contented Mm. You move on straight away, and I think that goes like to your playing days about it's the next game. Mm. Don't don't bask in the glory. You're moving on all the time. So that's and ambition, I think, isn't and it? I think it's a bit of a curse at times. It's yeah. like take the 2019 Challenge Cup final, for example. If you remember, we went into the game, underdogs against Saints, boom, we beat them. Which, I mean, had a tremendous, tremendous result. And I'm on to right, okay, trying to get league leaders, grand final. What what does that take? Up, oh, I'm, I'm teetotal. I don't drink. So I'm up first thing the next day. Right, moving on, moving on. They say you've got to stop and smell the roses. And that's something I think that I probably need to, does it need annoy, to work Does it annoy out. people around you, that? Does it what? Yeah. Does it annoy Yeah, it drives them mad, yeah. Did you say a teetotal? Don't yeah, drink. I don't drink. How long, yeah. how long have you not drunk for? Uh, four years. Was there a reason behind four that? Four years. I, I wasn't that? a massive drinker anyway. When I did, I'd probably have a bit too much. But I used to struggle with the hangovers. You get anxiety off the hangovers. Uh, so the focus is clearer. Focus. Really, there's a reason uh, for do it. Do you know what, as well? It's, it, again, it's being driven that... I think it gives me an edge over the chief executives. I know that's crazy, that, and probably it's a little bit, do you know what I mean? Nonsense, really, I suppose. But I'm thinking, right, if, if I'm clear 100% of the time, that's going to give me an advantage over them because they're not going to be on it all the time. So I right. see it as a superpower. Because I've read about you, you know, that, and we're going to get on to some of the abuse you had last yeah. season because I think it's a key part in this story. 
but you you not only you know try to look after yourself physically mentally emotionally spiritually would you say you're a a spiritualist yeah 100 percent. and describe that for us for those who don't have a clue what that means it's i'm not i'm not religious uh i mean i come from a catholic family but i'm i'm not i'm not into religion but it's understanding as a higher being uh up there in some way shape or form uh and but i see spirituality as similar to meditating is is being centered is understanding your place in the world uh so yeah that's as a, as a tough man from wigan like that's unusual it's an unusual yeah. sort of take i mean it, don't get me wrong it's becoming yeah more and more prominent people yeah. are, uh, people are more aware now than ever of you know self-care aren't yeah, they? But, yeah but in towns like wigan and st helens like the way you're talking now it's really forward thinking, yeah. isn't it? yeah and yeah. i think probably since i stopped drinking looking like i said i was never a big i never a big drinker anyway mm. uh but it probably started in it started again the challenge cup final as we beat saints on a high get back the following day do you know what i mean get off the train can't wait what to watch the game and i catch myself on tv speaking to steve price the coach and i was like wow i look terrible i put so much weight on mm. i was bloated almost unrecognisable. I'd seen myself on TV, TV before, uh, but I let it creep, creep up on me, mm. uh, working crazy hours, and I, I still do to a degree. And I probably, you know what? I've got to look after this club, all these people, but I'm not looking after myself. I think that's really important. How can I get the best out of those people? It's by getting the best out of myself. Uh, so then that's when I probably, I started my journey in terms of looking after myself physically, mentally, emotionally. <coughs> And spiritually. And so how, how do you do that? Do you speak to people? Do you read books? How do you go about ch- having such a seismic change in, in your lifestyle to looking after yourself and being more spiritual than you probably, you probably never touched on that before, I'm guessing? No, not really. Uh, read, read, I mean, read a lot of books, uh, listened to podcasts, uh, audio books, things of, th- things of that nature. Uh, yeah, listening to, speaking to people of, of, of similar mindset, but it is becoming more common that now that people are taking self-care a lot, uh, a lot more prominent, actually. So you did a sports performance degree, right? I'm just rewinding a little bit before you came into Warrington. Um, and is that right? You did that? I mean, I yeah. just made that one up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and you were a player welfare officer as well. That's correct. So take us through that transition then to, to get to the Halliwell Jones. Yes, yeah, so, so as I was saying, so when I finished playing in, at the end of 2010, uh, I, I could see from the outset that Warrington was a club on the up. I mean, Tony Smith had just joined, had just won a Challenge Cup, won two Challenge Cups, uh, real exciting times. So I approached, approached Warrington, approached Tony and said, look, uh, I know I've, I've uh, not got the experience in terms of uh, practical experience from a conditioning perspective, but I've just got a degree. Uh, would you take me on free of charge? Do not want to pay me? It's one of the experience. There we are again. There we are again, as, 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 as we touched on. And I probably... Uh, was in was, was supporting the conditioners for about four months. Uh, I got, actually got a job opportunity to go to Castleford. Castleford, uh, Ian Millward was at Castle at the time, and he uh, he approached. I think he mentioned it to Tony about look, we we want to take him to be to work on our conditioning staff. It was a paid role, but during that four month, it quickly became apparent that I probably don't want to do this for the next 20, 30 years, irrespective of just doing a doing a three year degree in it. Uh, and an opportunity came up to be the player welfare manager, which at the time was Brian Kearney was doing the job, but his commitments with, with Sky increased. And Tony was quite uh, quite forward thinking in this space and Warrington were pioneering on the player welfare provision. Uh, so Brian stepped away and I stepped stepped into that stepped into that role and a role that I really enjoyed. And there's probably skills to this day that, uh, that, that I apply that I learnt during that period that you're dealing with people, you're counselling people, you're supporting people, whether that be with players transitioning across from, from Australia or someone that having issues at home, whatever that may be. Mm. So, yeah, that was my, my first paid role was a, was a player welfare manager. That progressed again to being the, like the football manager, which is looking after the uh, football operations, logistics of the first team. Uh, and then I went to university again to do an MBA because uh, once I started a, on my journey in the, in the sports administration, I wanted to be a chief executive, uh, and I knew I didn't have the, the experience, but I wanted to learn the theories. So 
uh, was a football manager, then progressed to being head of rugby operations. That's looking after the whole rugby division between first grade all the way down to down to scholarship. And then fortunately enough, in 2017, I was appointed chief executive. And chief executive officer, what are the biggest challenges of that role? What's the best thing Say, about the job? Saying it. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> Ten times. Yeah, you, I wouldn't want to be called CEO. I'd want to be chief executive officer on the badge, you know. But um, what, what's the best thing and the worst thing about that job? Yeah, a real corporate, corporate jug on this is stakeholder management. Dealing with people. Yeah, dealing yeah. with people. The dealing parts with people of it that you hate, job. right? Pardon? There must be parts of the job that you hate, that it's just uh, the sort of the red tape. Is it, is it weird, the titles that we still have? Yeah. It's, like, isn't that a it's weird title? Yeah, <laughs> no, it's but American it is a weird title. title. Yeah, mm. chief executive, yeah, I, yeah. Suppose, I suppose so. But look, the, the roles, it, it's cool. It's very, it's very diverse, very diverse. It's from one day to the next. It's very different. Even today, so let's take today as a, as a snapshot. So mm. uh, trained in the morning, uh, then I met an agent. Then I had a welfare meeting with our head welfare officer and head of youth and the coach about a welfare provision at the club. I then met our catering partners in the afternoon. Uh, and then I'll take some here. So, yeah, food sampling. <laughs> yeah, that's nice. Huh? Yeah, so it's very diverse, very yeah. diverse, but something that I, I really enjoy. And, and obviously, the relationship with the head coach yeah. is massive, right? How important is that for you and has been over the last few years? Yeah, I think it's. I think it's I think it's really important I think you've got to stay tight particularly when you're going through times like last year when it was really difficult that you're there to, su to support him do you know what I mean people say I mean, people often ask me how many people do you know what I mean do you uh, do work for you well I see it a different way I can I kind of work for them do you know what I mean in, in a in a uh, in, in, a, in, in, a, in a different way I'm there to service them provide guidance provide provide support and similar with the with, with the head coach, that's it's really important. I speak to Daryl probably every every single day, uh, as I, as I mentioned, particularly when we went through the the uh, do you mean the, the poor the other the, the trauma of, of last season. It was important. It, it was tight. Let, let's focus on that because I could see your body language change there when you talked about last season. You were looking down. You weren't looking at us. You know, <laughs> and you described it as trauma. It's like a dark, dark place. And look, you can laugh now as we record this. Yeah, you're two yeah, out of yeah, two yeah. in your top of Super League. But let, let's rewind twelve months, right? Yeah. And to the to the beginning of the Daryl Powell era. I mean, you were obviously a big part in getting Daryl yeah. to the club. There was a game in particular, I think it was, were you at the game, John? It was at Hull KR, 15 minutes into the game. Um, the, the Warrington fans are chanting for your name to be yeah. sacked, you're 20 do, points do you know, down. I mean, yeah. the, the, so, you're the CEO, you're not the manager. Yeah, you're not the head coach. Yeah. Look, do you know what? And there's three, well, there's, there's three games last year, Will, that stick out in my mind, so, which I'll touch on shortly in a bit, is the, is the Hull KR one, which, which wasn't great. And then there was uh, Leeds at home. We'd, we'd played Saints, not the week before, because yeah. we had the week, week <clears> we had the weekend the lead, off. The Leeds, it was the week before that. And we pushed, Saints were great that night. They beat us with two points. We were, we were fantastic. Uh, they, I didn't get that. Mine does. That's the producer. Please. That's got all so, come through. Simon Moran's so we, best yeah, genius. Yeah, yeah, please yeah. stop talking. Yeah, yeah. So we uh, so we played. It was, it was unbelievable in defeat. Tommy Mason was an unbelievable last ditch tackle on Connor yeah, Rench yeah. at the uh, to mean to, to, to prevent us from winning the game. Mm. So confidence was up. Right, you know what? We turned the corner here, and then we play Leeds the following week. Or the, we did play the Challenge Cup game, and then and then we play Leeds mm. and we start off really well and I think at the time Leeds are next to bottom yeah. and they whack us with 40 points yeah, yeah. they absolutely take us to the cleaners and I was just like wow mm. didn't expect that coming do you mean that was a that was a real jolt and then the third game was a Toulouse game at home which we ended up winning oh, I, I do you remember we was in total control 32 yeah. minutes yeah, yeah. if it was a boxing match they would have stopped it mm. we was 12 nil up total dominance within 8 minutes they score 18 points mm. and we go in at half time behind and now it was being billed as a relegation relegation yeah. battled and I was just and I remember just sat in my seat mm. and I was just like wow that, I can't believe what's just happened mm. there uh, and unfortunately we'll, we, uh, we we come out the other side but going to, to the to the old KR game it was the first time before any game I thought we're in trouble here even when we've not been great, we've gone to Saints, gone to Wigan, gone to Leeds, whoever, I've always been confident in our team with our roster that if we turn it on, we can beat them. Because at that time, the confidence was rock bottom mm. and any adversity that we had, the lads would just, the lads would just go, the struggle, the crumble. We get to the game late, there's a crash on the motorway, the boys are getting changed on the bus, they have to put back the kick off about 20 minutes, I'm like, we're in trouble here. Yeah, yeah. 15, 15 minutes in, 
we're 20 points down. But that's not, with, that's not, that's Daryl. That's not you, right? Yeah. You know, well, I, know, I know you don't want to, it's not a blame game, but like, why are they singing for the CEO? Well, look, I, I don't understand that. I, I don't understand that, but and it, and it comes with the territory. I'm not saying it's nice, uh, but I understand that it comes, it comes with, it, it comes with the territory. But be honest, Carl, just to focus on that, because John's got some really good views on this, or interesting views on this. Um, and, you know, I think it's fair to say John's had a fair amount of stick, which now I'm not allowed to read yeah. out on the podcast. The legal teams have been involved and we can't say too much. Don't strike me, John. Okay. Um, Can I read it out? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, but in all seriousness, when you hear something like that, because it's one thing getting it as a player, right? I can imagine when people are singing about you as a player and it's, it just has to be like water up a duck's back. Yeah, yeah. There must be some side of you which takes it to personal. Of course, takes it it, to absolutely. I'm a human being at the end of the day. But what, 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 what really, probably what really upset me is Later on that year, we bring over Matt Dufty uh, from from the Bulldogs. Anyway, so I bring him and, and Maggie's partner to my house just to help help settle him in. And he's chatting to me, chatting to my kids. My youngest daughter, she's proper into rugby league, uh, and he's chatting to her. And she said, oh, "What's it like in Australia?" He said, "Do you mean it's the press is? I mean, they're pretty brutal over there." He said, uh, "I was a bit of a pantomime villain. I'd get hammered on social media." She said, "Oh, it's not nice. That is, I see my dad get hammered on social media." And it's Ooh. not, and it upsets me said. a little bit. And I was, do you know what? And she'd never spoken about it since then. Yeah, wow. And I was like, wow. I didn't really, a bit naive for myself, really, because I know they're on social media that, that they'd not been exposed to it previously. And she said, yeah, it's not nice. It's, it upsets me when you see my dad getting abuse on there. Mm. I was like, bloody hell. Yeah. I'd not really, not, really, not really thought of that. No. Uh, so look, I understand it, com it comes with territory, but I'm a human being at the end of the day. No one likes to, do you mean, have abuse, abuse, abuse labelled at them? Yeah, criticism, at them. criticism and praise come from the same yeah. place, actually, don't they? So I think an acceptance to hear praise about yourself, you've got yeah. to accept that there's an alternative out there and, and, and criticism's hard. Yeah. I think it's really hard to deal with but you have to be aware it exists. Do you know what, John? Do you know what, John? So out of this, I think some good come out of this, because then I talked to our, talked to my kids about this, about, you know, the, you, have you heard the Theodore Roosevelt speech about the man in the arena? I yeah. love that. That's I, my favourite one of my It's one of my favourite speeches. It was addressed in Paris, I think, 1932, I think it was. And basically what he said is, is look, what do you want to be in life? Do you want to be the man or the woman in the arena? Or do you want to be a bystander, a critic mm -hmm. on the side? And I said that to my daughter, I said, what do you want to be? Do you know what I mean? Be prepared to fail. Put yourself out there. Because I know what I'd rather be in life. I'd rather be the one in the arena as opposed to the critic on the sideline who's never achieved anything or won't achieve anything because they're scared of failing. Mm -hmm. He says those timid souls that never feel victory or defeat. Correct. Like that, yeah. Correct. So off the back of that, I think there were some viable life lessons that I was able to pass on to my, to my kids. Jamie Peacock's yeah, got massive. that tattooed on his back. Has it? Yeah. Yeah, it's massive. It's yeah. massive, that. But like putting yourself out there to fail and be criticised for failure is life. Yeah, you know, you just in everyday life, you just don't hear it. Mm -hmm. You know, we hear it because we're in a, a public face. Has it ever affected you? No, I, no, because when I grew up, I had Rudyard Kipling if on my wall, and I had that in a poster on my wall. My my grandma gave it to me, and and the one thing it was, it's you know, essentially just treating victory and failure as the same thing. He's, yeah. he's like viewing it through the same lens. Yeah. Treat those two imposters just the same. Triumph from disaster is what, mm. how he says it. But like, I view heavy praise and heavy criticism exactly the same. Yeah. Coming from almost a baseless grounds where praise that's over the top is, 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 is equally as distorted as somebody who hates you. It's just we're more willing for our self-esteem to accept the positive stuff. Yeah. And, and, I, and I think there's a real clarity and beauty in understanding that people, some people will not like you. Mm. But we, we are conditioned to be liked. Well, we want to be liked. We, we, we're yeah. social creatures. So we all want people to like us. But there's a harsh reality of life where people just will not, and, and for not rational reasons, mm. will dislike you. Yeah. And espe I, especially in well, especially in our industry, you know what? I was yeah. going to say as well, John, with that, and, I've, and, I've, and I may have said this to you before, is and this is why I think, I think a lot of professional athletes that if they can direct when they finish playing, I don't like using the word retirement because everything is associated. Yeah. When they transition out of, of professional sport, that if they direct their energies into a different vocation, I think a lot of them will be successful mm -hmm. because your appraisal is every Friday night mm -hmm. under the lights. And the feedback's brutal. If you've not been great, you get told by your peers, the coach, the press, the supporters, 
fix it or you're out. Mm. Another thing as well, you're always on a fixed term contract. You've got to keep delivering. You've got to keep delivering. Otherwise, yeah. you won't be able to provide for your family. Did it make you when you heard that? I mean, we'll get onto the emails because that's even more personal, right? Someone emailing you abuse, which is actually quite topical as we record this, where the Chelsea manager, for example, Graham Potter, has been getting death threats and his yeah, family has been yeah. having death threats. And the most of these people that we shouldn't really take any notice of, right? Yeah. But it, it's when, it, when it's at a stadium and it's, it's your own people, because John, you've just said there that, you know, not everyone's going to like you, but when there's a bulk of your own yeah, people yeah. singing it, that's quite deep, right? Yeah, it is. So did, but did, when you heard that, did that make you actually think, I need to work harder here, I need to do more, even though you thought you are doing everything, I need to do something yeah, else. Yeah, it, it, does, it does make you more still, It does make you more determined, 100%. It does, it does make you more determined. But look, we had a plan. We had a plan. When we interviewed Daryl, he said, look, this is a rebuild. This is going to take some, it's, this, is a, this is a rebuild. No, we didn't, we didn't envisage that it was going to be, do you know what I mean, turn out like it did. But we knew that we're going to have to have a high turnover of players here. Players here. Now, we had 14 players off contract. We retained two of them. We retained two, two players. So within that, you've got instability. Now, Maslow's hierarchy of needs, do you know what I mean, what a seminal, yeah, yeah. Semin, seminal, yeah. uh, seminal work, a seminal study, which is, a, which is a psychological framework, a motivational theory. One of the foundations is safety mm. and employment. And status, then s self actualization. We, 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 we took that away from, from 12 players. Mm. So as human beings, are they going to be, I wouldn't say not committed, but are they going to be totally for the cause? And I can't blame the players as human beings. Of, of course, you need, you need to be thinking ahead about what's, you know what I mean, what's, what's my next contract look like? Where, where's that coming from? So I think having that, that kind of created uh, uncertainty within the, within the camp. Was the discontent, discontent in the dressing room at that time due to all these factors? Yeah, I think, I think, I think it, I it wasn't harmonious. It no, was, I don't think, yeah. I, I, I don't think it was, man, because of all the plays that were off, off, off contract. Mm -hmm. I mean, for one reason or another, and there's been some great plays that have, that have left and gone to di different clubs, but it probably wasn't the players that, that Daryl wanted to, to fit his style of play or, or, or his character that he wanted. There's been some great players that left last year, but they just didn't, they just didn't fit. But as a human being, if you're told that you're not wanted, because in the first of May, you've got to give a player a letter, one of three letters from the RFL, which is basically, you're being kept on, <laughs> this, <laughs> this, is the, this is the deal. <laughs> uh, you're not being kept on, or not yet decided. So most players get, get not, not, not yet decided. So to have that actually given to them, again, that, yeah. that rattles them a little bit. Was there ever a point where you thought, I've made the wrong decision with Daryl Powell? Uh, no. Did you question his methods? Uh, Personally, I'm not saying no, Do you know what I think, Luke, and he's been open, if he had his time again, he would, he'd probably get a similar outcome. He'd probably yeah. have the similar end, end, end goal with, yeah, with yeah. some of the stuff that happened. But how we, were, how we go about it, it may have been a little bit little Yeah, because I'm just trying to get into, just into your head. So, yeah, mm. is, is you've made this decision, you brought Daryl yeah. Powell in, and, and that decision's linked with you. And the way it sort of played out, like, I don't care who you are, there's a point in your mind you're going, oh no, like, <laughs> oh no. You know, this is, yeah. it comes on you at the end of it. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I'm just wondering, you know, even if you deny that thought, it, it, it was, it's there, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, that yeah. background, is it, is this right? Have I done this? Is this right? Would I have done it like that, yeah. you know? It's funny actually, because we are chatting about this earlier with Daryl about, uh, at the end, and the following day after, the, after, after games, we go and meet in this cafe in Lim, and it was like The Apprentice. Do you know after The Apprentice and things have gone wrong with the dissecting the day before all the projects, and it was like me and Daryl chatting. Are you just like the, the greasy spoon. Yeah. The greasy spoon. Are you more, are you more Karen or sugar? Uh, yeah, sugar. You gotta say sugar, aren't you? Sugar. It's gotta be sugar. sugar. There was there was one thing. Right. There was one thing that struck me with the first year at Warrington, and it was, I think Daryl only signed one play from Cass, which was Ollie Holmes. Yeah. And if you're bringing a player into a new club, you've got to completely vouch for that player and know exactly what they're like on the field, off the field. Now, Ollie didn't turn, that transfer didn't work out as yeah, it should have done. Yeah, it didn't. Now, in terms of a coach kind of signing someone he can vouch for, I thought that's not a good sign if the player that he's bringing with him didn't kind of work out for the club or on performance Do side. you know what though, Mark? I, I understand what you're saying. From an outsider looking From in. From an outside looking in. But I think it actually turned out to be one of... Uh, how can I put this? It was a strong message from the coach that, irrespective of who you are yeah. and my relationship, we're not carrying any passengers. Right, okay. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. I understand what you're saying that 
and he was close with Oliver and all that was a very difficult decision for Daryl personally and all that. Yeah. Uh, Luke Oliver's a great player and, he's, and I, I know he'll be, great, he'll be great for Lee, but it just wasn't right for what we wanted at that, at that time. So the message that gave to the other players... Rather look, than persevere with it and kind of prove it. Correct. He did the other thing and then, yeah. and, and kind of yeah. showed that... He didn't, didn't double, he didn't double down on his yeah. decision. He just... Mm. Sam strength in a way. Email yes. abuse seems quite highbrow for trolls, doesn't it? You know, it's normally, let's get on Instagram. To whom did may concern. <laughs> yeah. Forthwith. Um, well I mean, you, from what I read, and tell me if I'm wrong, you, you, you were getting pretty abusive emails, yeah. right? From fans that weren't just, what, again, the what people... What does it say in the subject? Or whatever. But these, <laughs> these were season ticket holders, right? These were people that yeah, went to the yeah, games. Yeah. What, what, give us a flavour of what yeah. was being... And how, and how abusive were they? Yeah, a subplot to this is quite funny, actually. Is, you remember the referee, Carl? Well, Cut? no, no, oh, no, 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 and I always want to say Carl Kirkpatrick. I was just going to say. I can't, I can't not, even in my mind. <laughs> no, but even you in my mind. Fitzy and you're fine. No, okay. Fitzy's fine, but yeah, I can't, yeah, in yeah. my mind, I've planted it and I'm going yeah. He's used to it, he's a referee. So we, exactly, so he was on the receiving end from a lot of, uh, a lot of, a lot of my abuse. So, uh, rightly so. Rightly he so. He, maybe he should have CC'd you both. Yeah. <laughs> he should have just said he was the CEO. Yeah. It wasn't you. I bet he thought he got rid of all the abuse yeah, and all the swagging yeah. off. Maybe you're then. Superman and he's Clark Kent. Do you know what I mean? You could be the same person. Possibly, possibly. But what's the question? What was the <laughs> the email abuse. The correspondent. Yeah, the email abuse. The letters. Yeah. Well, like, yeah. just give us uh, genuinely, because I can imagine some of that stuff was pretty disgusting. Right? Yeah, it's like F out of our club. You, F, I remember one of them, F out of our club, you're more interested in merchandise sales and winning games. Yeah, that's yeah, that's yeah. That, that's just one example. How Some, personal did it get? I mean, because again, I'm, I'm I'm trying to make this just shoehorn in the relevance of Graham Potter. But yeah, just you know, when, it, when it brings in yeah. family and kids yeah. and personal stuff like that, that must yeah, be just so explicit. disheartening. Yeah, right? it, it is. It is, and quite hard to just bat off or, or not. Uh, do you know what? When you're a leader of an organisation, you have to. When things aren't going great, you've got to get your shoulders back. You've got to go in there. You've got to find positivity because people looking at you and how you behave, and how you react. And if I go in there, do you know what I mean, with shoulders down, feeling down, do you know what I mean, no, we can't see a way out, no plan, uh, that's going to then reverberate around the organisation. So at times there was a bit of a, a bit of bravado, a bit of bluffing, as you said earlier, yeah. we're going in and positive, we're that's deep down, you're thinking, Phew. do you know what I mean, we're doing it tough at the minute because the financial ramifications of what was happening on the field mm. was enormous. And I felt for the guys in the in the in the organisation that are, that are public facing, the girls in the shop, the guys in the ticket office. Daryl getting these emails as well. Yeah, he, he was get he was getting abuse. He tells a funny story actually that uh, end of the season, he was out in a pub in Lynn, and a guy comes up and goes, "There you go," gives him half a mild, <laughs> said, "I'm giving you half because you don't deserve a pint." <laughs> oh, oh, that's disrespectful. <laughs> Yeah. So, but yeah, look, look, he was he was on the receiving end. He was on the receiving end of it as well. It is the more pressure on Warrington than any other club. I would say so. I would say What's so. Just just that? due to the due to the investment that uh, that the board's put into board put into the club and, with, abuse and well. never won it. Do you know what? I think he, he, they did get a bit, which is look, I can accept it because I'm get paid to do a job. Mm. This guy and Stuart Middleton, the chairman putting significant sums in and they're getting abuse. Mm. That's like, are you serious? The money doesn't buy you success. Does it, it doesn't buy success. But in terms of an indi but in investment. terms of individual that's had a uh, impact on on a club, I can't think of anyone more than Simon Ran that's it's had, crazy a, that that's had a big impact on a Super League club. I know he's, do you know what I mean? He, he likes to, uh, doesn't like the limelight, but there should yeah. be a statue of him. And he gets nothing back for it, does he? Nothing back. It's nothing crazy, back. isn't it? It's, it's, mm. it's crazy what people do. They pump millions into yeah. clubs. I think what he could have done with that for himself. And, but it's not, it's not only the investment as well. I speak to Simon every day. He's so passionate about the club. He so, loves rugby so league. So passionate he? about the club. And do you yeah. not understand the game? He watches Championship. He watches yeah. NRL. He loves the club. Do you know what I mean? I say he's well, so fortunate. So fortunate. He loves a family pack of crisps. You know, a big bag of crisps. <laughs> Whenever I see him in Manchester, he's always walking through spinning fields <laughs> with a massive bag of crisps. And, and he'll, he'll ask me something like a really obscure question about a player. Yeah, you know, yeah, what, yeah. Do you think he's, he's, what do you think about James Harrison from Featherstone? I'm like, yeah, he's a cracker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sign yeah, him. <laughs> yeah, he's got his, he's got his unbelievable finger on the pulse, and we're lucky to have uh, Stuart Middleton, who's a chairman as well, who also invests his yeah, own yeah. his own personal money into the mm -hmm. into the club. Do you know what I find really interesting? And John. 
I quite like you to weigh in on this one. So you, because you, you know, we, we're talking about the abuse now. You've by no means gone out there and done interviews, and you talked about it because it happened in stadiums. You know, it was obvious. It was. Do, happening, do you know? Right? What, do you know what I did? Will want. So 2017 was my first year chief executive. It was a tough year that year. <clears throat> we had the front of shirt sponsor Emirates was expiring. We had the stadium naming rights. Hallowell Jones was expiring. The kit manufacturer deal was expiring. Our marquee player Chris Sando didn't come back for the pre-season his agent let us know a week before left his car at Tesco he did <laughs> he did he did and on, on field shop. on field we bombed we was in the middle eights at the time do you remember the middle yeah, eights yeah. the top eights we ended up in we ended up in the middle eights and again I was, and I was like that was my first year chief executive yeah. that was a baptism of fire an unbelievable learning experience and again getting abuse again my fault, do you know what I mean? Blah, 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 and experience. And do you know what I did? The last five games, I think it's four or five games of the, of the, of the season, home games, I should say, yeah. I made myself available outside the stadium. So where the Brian Bevan statue is, I said, right, yeah. I'll be there. No, before kickoff, for 45 minutes. Did you turn up with pitchforks? Uh, not many turned up. <laughs> not many turned <laughs> That's up. That's a great psychological experiment. Not, not many it? turned up, but I was there. Some turn up and ask me some questions. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, not, not many turned see, up. See, this is what interests me because, and this is so sort of relevant just in my head today because I was listening to Simon Jordan, who, <clears throat> love him or hate him, is, yeah. is great copy and great radio. And he was talking about this around Potter and around other uh, yeah. others in the football industry. Paul Scally, for example, I don't know if you know him, he's yeah, chilling yeah, 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 yeah. and they've had issues. And people who sort of go out there and put it out in the limelight that, oh, I've been abused, like Graham Potter has done yeah, recently. Yeah. We would not have known that had Graham Potter made that a narrative. And I'm not saying he's wrong to do that, but he has said I've been abused um, and obviously the PR of that is a lot of Chelsea fans real Chelsea fans will say that's disgraceful and get behind him right but he didn't he could have kept that behind Simon Jordan's argument in this and this I think transcends across all sports is you are a CEO you are a club owner you are um, a director you're on the board you're a leader leadership leaders true leaders would would not make that relevant and topical they would bat it away disguise it not even bring it to the top of the of the story and, and that sounds like something yeah, you, no, you, that you've tried to do, right. you know. And, yeah, and Simon yeah. Jordan said, because he was the Crystal Palace, yeah, yeah, and he yeah. got all sorts of shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you've got you you carry the burden of responsibility for so many people when you're in charge yeah. of something. So and, it's and, abhorrent. And, do you know, know the what only, you're getting? But it is. But the only time, and Fitzy's nailed it, is the only time it hurts is when people close to you get upset. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The only time I get upset is if my mum's upset hmm. or my wife's upset. Do you know, it doesn't upset yeah, yeah, me. Yeah. And that happens. But I'd right? get upset if I heard, you know, my wife say, oh, this had happened. I heard somebody say this. Someone once told me that if you play well or play rubbish, the people that care about you don't care. But the people that don't care about you, they're the ones that are bothered if you play badly or play well. Yeah. yeah. So I think understanding what you're in a sanctum, those close people to you, as long as their opinions are, you're fine. And I think the, the, the person on the street that doesn't care about your well-being, their opinion doesn't really yeah. matter, does it? Do you it? know what? In, in a perverse way, it's quite good because at least the supporters care. Mm. Do, you, do you understand what I mean yeah. with that? At least they're bothered about it. The reaction is more tribal towards you because rather than being a yeah, player yeah, or being yeah. a halfback, you yeah. get a lot of shit as a player. It's more because you are pulling the yeah, strings yeah, yeah, on yeah. their season, on yeah. their future. on and, and you know what it's like for, for fans, well, well, rightly or wrongly. That is their escapism. That is, yeah. you know, whether, if we're to lose four games on the trot, yeah. that they are we need, in a need someone to blame. In, I should, I that in, any, in any walk of life as human beings, we probably need, we need, someone, we need, we need someone to blame. And, but last year, Fitzy, we, like being frank, you were second from bottom. Yeah. And you made the decision to hire him as coach. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? What I'm saying is we sometimes as leaders or of organizations we bear the strongest responsibility yeah, so at yeah. that stage it's not unexpected to get abuse it's yeah, not nice yeah. do you think any of it was justified then uh, <laughs> justified <laughs> yeah i'm not i'm not more interested in retail sales than uh, <laughs> <laughs> someone actually should have said said to me should have gone back with johnny after offering him 10 percent off in the shop <laughs> <laughs> do you bug off? But not loads. <laughs> no, but, but do you know what? I understand it. Do you know what I mean? The passion yeah. about the club as I am. It's what the frustrating thing is that I probably think about that club, and this is genuine. This probably ninety percent of waking hours, I'm thinking about the club, the team, how to improve. Goes back to your early point earlier, Paul yeah. John. I'm constantly. It is. A, it is a lifestyle. Do you know what I mean? My dad's. My dad's wake. I actually left early to go to a friendly. Mm. Do you know what I mean? That's how much passionate I am about 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 the club so you're totally invested and you're trying to do this and trying to fix things we've got a plan 
why well, you've got people just giving you abuse. Do you know what I mean? That that's a bit gets a bit frustrating. What, what do you think goes through the minds of the people who send it? Do you know what, John? We we we've actually done so over the past couple of years. Some of our players have received death threats. Yeah. Have they? Players. We had we had uh, willing Josh to Char- to burgle. We had the house. Josh Charnley and. Yeah. Uh, Say one was Robert Hicks before the 2019 Chinese Cup final had death threats from these supporters, so we've, we've brought them in. You said death threats, and I'm not questioning that at all because I mean that is that is abhorrent, that is disgusting. But but go on, give me the level of death threats. So it I, should I be something like the someone, the yeah, no, no, I'm going to shoot, I'm going to shoot, yeah. I go back to, the, this, shoot, yeah. go back to people who, get, who had bullets sent through the post, right? That's yeah, pretty, yeah, that's not, it's not, yeah. not, not to that extreme. Look, there's a comment or is on it a 14 year old kid on Twitter, exactly, exactly. So then when we invite them in, and I'm like, see him sign reception, mate, who's that? said, it's, it's the lad that's given a death threat, like, really? Yeah. They're all, they are empty unless, you know, with it, very, the very, very, very dramatic exceptions. Mm. I just, I want to get in the mind of the people who send this stuff. I, I find that as interesting. I'm more Massively interested. Massively insecure, unhappy people, right? I don't know if they always are. I don't know if they have to be. I don't think you have to be really unhappy to send an abhorrent message to somebody. But I think if it was like a rough, sort of approximation of yeah it's probably people who don't have many responsibilities who don't have consequences for what yeah. they say in life but i just wonder what they feel like i've never done it so well, i wonder what they the feel like you've never done a death threat giving people a platform no, but you've never, you never delivered that's why right. the email the in, inbox yeah, is quite right. a strange place you're saying you never yeah. given a death threat and, and, and you would, you you would get annoyed obviously if it was you know look, if it's just a, a couple of things here and there but when it's a, a stand chanting yeah, when it becomes yeah, yeah, more yeah. tribal yeah there's more to it right there's yeah. more way did, did you have a point in that season where you thought right daryl everyone on the board here we go was there a pivotal moment when you went and I, and I know it didn't end well. You finished second bottom. You went out of the Challenge Cup early on. But did you have to have a kind of sit down and think, what are we doing here? Yeah, if, as I said, we'd have the meetings in the Apprentice Cafe. But, but, yeah, every, every board meeting. Because I said the financial ramifications that it had was 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 was, was significant on the, on the whole of the business. So every board meeting, we'd be discussing about, do you know what I mean, players leaving, play, players coming in. But as I mentioned earlier, when we brought Daryl in, he said, this is a rebuild. This is going to take, this He's is so going to different take a bit to Steve time. Price, right? In so very many different. ways. Yeah, very, very different. And Steve was, Steve was a great coach in his own right. He's been got us to, I think, three finals in his, in his, in his four year tenure. Uh, but different, dif- different to, different to Daryl. And I think, I often say this, that different coaches suit different teams at different stages. And I think where we was in our cycle and coaches management and coaching management style that, uh, that Steve uh, used to deploy, I think we needed something a little bit different more towards how, how, how Daryl was and, and to address the culture a little bit. Uh, and he brought that in. Uh, and as I said, we was, he said it was a rebuild. When you look at the players that was off contract, you look at the age, age of the playing squad. Uh, but we being brutally honest, we didn't envisage last year to turn out as it as, as it did, mm. but we followed through with it. As as I say, you can't be you can't be half pregnant. We followed through with it and did all the did uh, went through the tough decisions. Yeah, the, the the atmosphere. One thing that I find interesting on a match day is I, I went through this at Saints maybe two or three times during my career where the atmosphere becomes a tangible negative force. Yeah. On on the game, on influences performance. It becomes almost like soup, like texture in a stadium where you can feel it. Yeah. There's, there's, there's vitriol, there's like yeah. animosity. There's negativity in the air. Yeah, yeah but the, the interesting thing, what I found is how quickly that evaporates. What little... It's fickle, right? What, yeah, but what little positivity it takes to just eviscerate the vitriol. Mm-hmm. And, and at Saints, you know, you could feel it. It was tension. It's like, a, it's like playing in gravy. Like you're running around. You look like you ran in gravy much of your career, John. Absolutely. That's because yeah. I felt it. Yeah, or sound. <laughs> um, but when, when the atmosphere turns negative, it becomes a tangible thought. Yeah, it like does. it actually affects things. And I was at the Leeds game. I was at the Leeds game where he got beat by Leeds. And that's the first time since I finished playing where I was there and I was like, oh, mm-hmm. oh, yeah. I forgot about this. Mm-hmm. I forgot about this, this bit, yeah. because that's not enjoyable. Like playing in it's not enjoyable. Being in that environment's not enjoyable. And then do you know what the beautiful thing was? Coming to your first game this season, watching the production that you'd put on off the field, the effort that had gone into it, the bravado, puffing your chest yeah. out, fucking cracking on, you're not sure. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, <laughs> mate, I know you think you're not sure. And to smash that out the park and just feel like the the the, the, the sun had come out and the clouds had gone. Yeah. In it in right, like that. Yeah. If I could compare that to Leeds in that moment. Yeah. I was like blown away by wow, yeah. like the difference between net like negative toxicity, but, you know. But, but what fascinates me with that is those same people that emailed you aren't going to email you again saying, "Great job, mate." You've turned it <laughs> yeah. around, right? Change my mind. You're not that bad. <laughs> Re <Yeah>. email below. <laughs> well, ninety nine. Maybe some of them will. Maybe some will give him a full pint in yeah, part of the one stage. Yeah, yeah. But you see, you. I mean, look, you talk about negative, like like how much. You know, how many emails did you get? Maybe 20, 30, 50, 100, I don't know. Let's say, how many fans have you got? You know, about 10, five 000. times more than Salford. Um, 10 he loves that. He loves slagging off Salford. I'm going to fill him in after. Did, were, were there times, just before we move on, were, were there times where you thought, oh, I don't need this? No. Like, never? No. Never. Never felt like packing no. it in. I could just see Fitz. You're rugby raw, you aren't you? He's just Mr. Rugby Roy. Rugby Roy. Rugby Roy. Rugby Roy. Rugby Roy. Remember that rugby league raw? Yeah. I was, yeah, I was on that. He's yeah. meditating. He's meditating. Oh, I've got a picture of the scene. He's on his shakti mat. He's just, he's, then he's plunged in the ice bath and he just comes out. He's almost like a heavenly spirit. Yeah. And do, you know like, on, do you know on that? And it's a, and it's a prayer that, and I say I'm not religious, it's, but it is, a, it is a prayer that I say most days and it has been adopted by AA. And that, in fact, I used to give it to uh, soldiers in World War II. It's the serenity prayer. Do you know the serenity prayer? No, no. God grant me the serenity to upset the things I cannot change, understand the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference. And basically what that's saying is, just control, and it's a cliche, control what you can control. Yeah, yeah, control yeah. Control yeah. what you can control and don't worry about anything else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, what would, what love if it. you can give them a message, and I know you speak to them regularly and you stand out by the statue in Tesco's car park, but if you could speak to those Warrington fans now, what would, what would you say to them? Do you know what? I think we've probably, at Warrington, we've done a lot of speaking in the past. We've done a lot of speaking. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. We just want the action to speak louder than the words. And I think how we started off this season, it's, it, it, it's, it's showing that. Uh, and I'm, I'm just thankful that they've that they've had belief in the team because you look at the attendance of that first game over 11,000. Do you know what I mean? Season tickets have surpassed last year off the back of a, of a of a losing season. It's phenomenal. Do you know what I mean? So they have shown faith in the team. Just stick with us, and hopefully, come the end of the season, we'll be we'll be. There's competing. such a good feel good factor about Super League this season. Unbelievable. I've never Mark. in my well since I debuted in 2008 so since then I've never felt as a player or sitting on the couch never felt such a good feel good factor yeah, about totally every agreeing. club as well every team what's that down to? I don't know That's do you know what I think well I thought we started off the season pretty well not just on, on field in terms of in terms of Warrington perspective but the pre-game show we had the uh, world record attempt for the world's strongest man at half time and we, we embraced it we entertained we didn't enne- have scouting for girls though did you? no no but I went <laughs> to that show the following day so we embraced it we entertainment industry do you know what I mean so visually the guys did a fantastic job it looked really good they captured it fantastically well I went to the league game the following night Wow, I have never been to a pre-game show mm. like that in my life. It was phenomenal. Now, I should imagine Sky did a great job again in terms of capturing that. Yeah. And then Saints got to Australia and beat Penrith. Mm. Brilliant. Well, there was an Israeli-Palestine peace meeting between Derek Beaumont and John Wilkin as well. We, oh, yeah. Let's touch on that, actually. Um, but first impressions but, last. F- forget about Derek. First impressions last, don't they? Mm. So what, what the power of what the opener to the season's taught me, that if you start with a bang... Like you start with just a blitz of entertainment, yeah. mm-hmm. people are well. Everyone ears prick up. Everybody's but, interested. But not if you're twenty and points I, down after fifteen minutes. No, no, I'm not talking. I'm talking about the game. I'm talking about wider entertainment. Yeah. If you tuned in to the opening round of Super League this year, you would see an unbelievable spectacle at Warrington. Mm-hmm. Off, I'm saying what Fitz has done as mm-hmm. well, which we need to talk about. We talk about hate emails. We're talking about a chief exec who. He's pushing things all the time. Mm-hmm. Thinks deeply about match day experience. Drives a club in the toughest of situations last year, but drove a club. And, and in terms of match day experience, you know, I look at Warrington and, and I think I said this to you when I interviewed you the other day, like what you do off the field mm-hmm. for me is like in some ways setting, you know, setting a standard. What, what's been key then to turning things around? And I know it's early days this season, but you said there's such a good feeling around the club. Yeah. How important was the recruitment? What are the targets? And you know, because it was a really important off season for you, wasn't it? Probably yeah, the most important you've had there. Like as I said earlier, Will. So we've had a, a turnover of our top playing squad from the start of 2022 to 2023 of 50 percent. 
that's unheard of. Yeah. That's unheard of. Uh, so we did a, we went through a, a massive transition this year, and the, the probably the best word I can use to sum it up is balance. We've got a balanced squad. We've gone top down and bottom up approach in terms of culture and leadership. What I mean by that is the players that we brought in, the senior players, are aligned to what we want from a leadership group, and also the kids that we've promoted are totally aligned as well. But you look from playing styles as well. So we've probably not got it right previously with George, George's halfback partner. I mean, we had Gareth Widdop and we had, I think, Stefan jump, jumped in there. They're probably two similar, two, two instinctive players. Mm. Jimmy Gareth, tremendous, unbelievable player, as is Steph now operating at centre. We brought Josh Drinkwater in, a functional organising seven that's, that gets us around the park and lets George do his thing. And then they've got the pack, obviously. We've gone from the smallest pack to probably the biggest pack in, pack in Super League. And then we've got pace out wide. And we've got competition for places. So the best word I can describe was is, is a more balanced Warrington team. And balancing your halves is probably the most important facet of a team, yeah. I think. And George is brilliant, but when he's at so, so much more at his best when he can be instinctive yeah. and run the ball and let someone else do the kicking and the guiding. Yeah. And it's been interesting that a lot of the, the middles that you've signed have been really experienced as yeah. well. I think that will be probably when times get tough in yeah. the season where you maybe lose a couple of games, that experience, those players that have been around and, and won comps and played for the country, that'll be so important then as well. I used, to, I used to pack down against teams, right? And you pack down against the team and you look who you're playing against, you think, yeah, not bothered. Like, they might play well, they might beat us, but I'm not bothered. And I saw that with Warrington last year. I thought if I packed down against these lot, I'd yeah. fancy it. If if not just because of me, I'm saying if who I was with, I'm looking around at my guys and going, yeah, we got these boys today. Yeah. And now you know what the difference is. You pat down Paul Vaughan, massive, Cassiano, massive, James Harrison, Mass, yeah. at, not just massive, yeah. a gun, like a yeah. great player. Yeah. Um, what you start packing down there, and then 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 it becomes di a different question altogether. Yeah. And there's a couple of young kids as well coming through. Nicholson, great. Kid. I think Holroyd is it. I've yeah. seen a little bit of him. Yeah. He looks like. There's a really good, again, balance that you said before of seasoned pros, been yeah. around, probably setting really good standards, and then two or three really good back rowers that can, if they can follow in the footsteps and the habits that these great senior pros have let, have, mm. have, have, have put down for them. They're going to be some superstars. Yeah. And we've got, we've got four players who didn't play last week who'd be challenging to get in that 17, Gil Dudson, Joe Philbin, Josh Maguire, and Matt Nicholson. So we've got four players that are going to be coming back in the next week or so. It's going to really challenge that 17 as well. What does success look like then this season? Got to win do you trophies think about, well. Do, do you think things it's like that? Year. You know, it's their year. It's their year. Coaches, <laughs> CEOs well, never want to set targets, do they? No, because well, there's always and, and a standard. And I mentioned earlier, well, well, I think we've probably been a bit guilty of, do you know what I mean, that uh, saying we're going to do this and we're going to do that. Look, we ex we want to be challenging come the end of the season. Do you know what I mean? We, to go from second bottom to winning it would be an almighty effort, and we've seen what Saints have done already. That certainly the benchmark, but look, we want to be there challenging come the end of the season. Yeah. I can say it, Fitzy yeah. Cat. They got to be top top three this year, and they're going to have to get to a final. Yeah. Or not? Not. I'm not saying you're going to have to. Yeah. I'm saying that's what success would look like. To go from yeah. second bottom to that for me would be would be a return and you know do you know what a theme that we've had this pre-season uh and and the opening rounds of this season is connection is connection to players players family connection to past players connection to supporters connection to the community because we wanted the supporters to fall back in love with the, with the with the club again and we've had a really really big emphasis on that and i think that's one of the reasons why we started off like a house on fire Mm -hmm. So before was it was it before Christmas or just that no around about Christmas so Daryl and I took all the wives out so me Daryl and, and thirty two women I felt like you Efna it was <laughs> <laughs> but that. again it was do you know what I mean their sacrifice Where did you take them <laughs> we took we took them to just you uh, and thirty two wives took, yeah. took them to Nando's took them to Nando's yeah Nando's we normally took them to the uh, a restaurant Last Ramblers in Warrington yeah yeah, yeah, yeah highly yeah, recommend yeah. Uh, we took them there on a, on, a, on a night out just to get to know them because as I mentioned earlier you got a lot of new a lot of new players a lot of new families that we want to get to know did they uh, all get on like a house on fire <laughs> did like they all get on, on it yeah <laughs> yes they did the shot started coming around at 11 p.m <laughs> so I went, right i'm off here see, <laughs> see you later but uh but again and i think that's paying dividends now you see all the players getting on unbelievably well i think that's really important games, right that, that, yeah, that, I think that, so. that wasn't just like oh let's have a nice night with it you were thinking about yeah, it's strategic something. about it again yeah. about being connection right okay what what do we need to do to get uh, close to the players families and the players wives etc so uh 
So yeah, so that was one. It's em- one empathy, that, isn't it? It is, John. It's empathy, isn't it? Yeah. It's like taking time to think about what, 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 what would they be going through, especially overseas players' wives who've come over. Yeah. Using empathy to actually just enlighten your thoughts on how to deal with people. Mm-hmm. Like, take time to think about other people when, you, when you're dealing with them. And, and, and it makes you make such good decisions. If, you just, if everybody just stopped and just tried to see things from other people's perspective, yeah. the world would be a better place. And even, we've got, let's go back to criticism, you've got to take time to think about where yeah. that criticism's come from and why it's come from yeah. that place. And if, when you start to do that, you do become less bitter about things mm-hmm. and you start to actually think more deeply about other people yeah. rather than what you want to do in life is make it all about yourself all the time. Yeah, but and I, I agree with you, but then I guess your own life has to be going well to think like that. Yeah, right? it, it does. Do you know something I've got better at as I've got, got older and more mature is that and in, in this in this position when you're making a lot of decisions, you're dealing with agents and sometimes you get, and that's something I've learned off Simon. Simon's really good at that. He mm. doesn't let anything hang over, just moves on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Moves on. Do you know what I mean? Which, uh, at first, you'd be thinking, hey, Jim's got one over on you, but now it's right, yeah, okay, that's yeah, fine. Yeah. Understand it from his perspective. Yeah. Do you think other CEOs would have pulled the trigger on Daryl? Uh, possibly, over clubs, possibly. I think so, yeah. I think so. That's yeah. not believing in why you're giving the job in the first place. Is That's appeasing fans of appeasing criticism. I think if you gave him a job for a reason, and he was the best candidate, I... When I knew that he was coming off contract, he announced that he was leaving yeah. Cass. I thought Warrington needs to get him. He'll be perfect. It might have taken a bit longer, but yeah. I still think he's probably one of the best coaches. But in the it game. is a results business, isn't it? And pressure from fans, pressure yeah, from sponsors. Yeah, I didn't think it'd go that bad. No, last year. <laughs> no, no, I, I didn't think it'd go I that bad. Like I, I thought, look, it, it, it's going to be tricky. I thought he'll come in. He's going to find out who he wants and who he didn't want. It's going to be a bit of a tricky time. Didn't expect him to tear up trees, but. It was hard to watch yeah, you know, it, it happening because you can sense that it needed to happen, yeah. but it was such an abrupt ripping off of a plaster. Yeah. It was like, you know, you're watching it through your fingers yeah. and I didn't expect it to go that badly. And that's why, I, I mean this from yeah. the bottom of my heart, when I got there week one, and this is nothing against Leeds, like I love Leeds, I think Leeds are a great club, but it filled me with a lot of joy to watch that first game. Yeah, because yeah, I felt yeah. like a release of weirdly I felt like pressure had gone off yeah, me yeah. because I'd seen it last year yeah. when I was working on Sky yeah. so. pe- pe- people have, have complained or not complained but they've said look why, why are you leaving 14 players off contract the reason we had 14 players off contract is we, we brought a new coach in so he he wanted to see first stand what those players were like do you know what I mean? It's from, from afar, from his position at Castleford, he'd have an idea, but it's not until you're working with them every day to understand exactly what they're like as human beings, what they're like as, what they're like as players. So that's why, ordinarily, a lot of those 14 players would have been, the contracts would have been but extended. But trolls don't care about context. No, no. That, no. That should, that's a great slogan, though. Get that on a T-shirt. Trolls don't care about context. <laughs> Rappers do. Um, that's <laughs> 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 good. Goldy looking chair. Yeah. Um, you dressed just to, to sort of finish this evening, this afternoon, this morning, whatever time of day you're listening. Um, what do you want your long term future to look like? Oh, I worry about this question for him. I worry about this question for him. <laughs> well, I was nearly going to butt in when he said about he was doing an MBA and then he'd be the chief exec. I'm like, where does this end? Mm-hmm. I just think Fitzy might become the first man to fly into space on a rocket pad. <laughs> <laughs> I think he might be the man who inhabits the moon on his own and then, and then he just, he's just yeah. on his way to Uranus like that. <laughs> You're right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> do, do, you know, do you know what? It's, it's hard to answer that way. Look, I love being at Warrington. I love working for the board. Uh, desperate to deliver. Do you know what I mean more success, more success for Warrington? Uh, do you know what I mean? As, as you can tell, little leagues in little leagues in my blood. So, who knows? I love it. Just lawn the tennis the association. <laughs> yeah. Definitely lawn tennis association. He's going to be on the PGA tour. He's going to be chief exec of the PGA tour yeah. or something. Or live golf. Oh, for the cash. <laughs> I just like, the way that you think, the way that you've been talking. I always felt like I don't ask you the question that if, you know, if you if you're on your deathbed tomorrow, what your biggest regret would be? Not being present. Not being present enough. Yeah. Not being to pri- Did you say not being to prison? <laughs> <laughs> it sounded like you said not being to prison. Not being, not being present. Yeah. Yeah. Which, yeah. which, not be, yeah, that's, that's, that, hey, that's the key. That all successful, mm-hmm. anybody who's successful, that, that's always, I feel like that's always a regret of theirs, isn't it? Yeah. Do you know that, 
it, and it goes back to what I said. I suppose. It's, it's pa- paradoxical, though, doesn't it, John? Because I think yeah. one of the reasons that people are successful is because yeah. they have that, they they're have that drive the and, they're all, and they're always moving on to it, Mark. But then you can't yeah. have it both, can you? You can't operate at that level and be that sharp and, and, and so fast-paced and be present. Gary no, Neville, knowing, Gary knowing Neville, Gary Neville can can't be. Yeah. It's hard, I no, reckon, but you, I think knowing when you can and can't. Yeah, I just balance. think... Balance. Yeah, yeah. it is it. balance, but balance it, it, for excessive people doesn't come easily. Yeah. If you live a life in excess, like <laughs> in excessive workload, excessive thoughts, excessive... It's being, it's being obs- it, you're right, it's being obsessive, and I'm fortunate they have a wife that understands that. It, she, do you know what I mean? She's been unbelievable, really, particularly last year, what was going on. It was just like, because it is, it is a lifestyle and it's not work-life balance, it is imbalance. But I, but I choose that. Yeah. I, I, I choose that. I'm happy with that. Yeah. And people Can you talk- be more present then? Uh, you're talking about that, you're saying, some, saying yeah, that you're imbalanced. With meditating, I, t- I try to be more, be more present. And just get a cardboard cut out. Just put Fitzy just cooking scrambled eggs in the kitchen like this, <laughs> just, just to cut out. And can I have Fitzy couch, Fitzy? It's just sat like this. Yeah. Numerous. Put that at the Halliwell Jones on match days when it's going yeah. badly. We've actually got the best seat in the house at the minute. Oh, I know. Who, the Hoover best seat in the house. It is sensational. Oh, we need a bit of that, don't it we? It is sensational. I've seen one of those at Old Trafford. Yeah. yeah. But it's not like Hoover's. We're, we're, you need to oh, experience yeah. ours. Well. Okay. No, it's, a cou- it's a couch. It's a couch. it. All, it, it well, well, let me back. sell it. Let, let me sell, sell it. Go on. Do it justice, John. So what Warrington have done is a once-in-a-lifetime experience to view a rugby league match from the com- comfort of a sofa. You'll have an unlimited food and drink offering delivered camera. to you. I'm talking to you, not the camera. Delivered Steve to the seats. Take it back. Yeah. You get chauffeured driven to the stadium. That's. Ooh. I was getting there. I was going to go back In to In a that. Hallowell Jones BMW. <laughs> how, how do we get oh, this? I know, Is your, tea, I know or... your tea total, but any alcohol in there? <laughs> uh, so what we'll do, we'll ask your special preferences ahead. What's your favourite drink? What's your favourite snacks? Are you sure they're ready to go? Mm-hmm. What's yeah. your favourite cheese? Cheese, <laughs> cheese <laughs> board. <laughs> cheese <laughs> board would be great. Would be. Is this a prize or do you pay for this? Uh, so it's it. So Hoover will, they'll some Hoover customers, uh, club supporter, Warrington supporters, they get a chance to, to experience that we've actually got man. the press in this this uh you've this, got aaron bauer Thursday. aaron Aaron's bauer in, uh, and matt Shaw and, and uh, matt turner the, yeah, from yeah. the war- for the warrington guardian yeah so it's uh all you can eat to experience that will i love it <laughs> I, love it. <laughs> I love it i love it that's the most genuine you've been yeah, ever. Fact, it's not too dissimilar to this actually it's, uh, <laughs> this, this is all taken from like a student li- a little bit <laughs> don't say nasty yeah. things about the sofas um, it's been an absolute pleasure, Carl. Thank you so much, mate, for coming. Well, thanks for having me. Carl Kirkpatrick. Carl okay. Kirkpatrick. And if there is any more <laughs> correspondence... Any more abuse, yeah, it's Carl does, does Kirkpatrick the, at does gmail.com. Does he still bring the... Does he, what, does he <laughs> so he's Carl... Carl.Kirkpatrick <laughs> at gmail.com. <laughs> for all of your chief exec and refereeing concerns, <laughs> yeah. please contact. Do, do, does he still have to bring sort of some posts from 2022 round? Is it still coming in sort it's of It still sections? comes in, yeah. Because obviously Carl's from Warrington, if you know this. Carl's from yeah. Warrington. He's a great guy. He's been to... Been a few games. So he forwarded on bits to you. Yeah. Did he ever forward bits no, on? No screenshot. Just send it. <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, Fitzy, you F- want to have a look at this one? It's a great John. It's quite funny. I'm not well. I'm on social media, but I've got a pseudonym just for news. And, and, and oh, have you? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I can't, yeah, yeah, I can't, can't, can't disclose who it is. But the amount of people that send me the abuse that I've not, that I've not, that I've not seen said, "You won't believe what they're saying about I know. you." That's a weird trait, isn't it? Like, <laughs> That's right. It's something like your mum would do. Have you seen this? What said about you? What do you want to do about it? No, it's true. Yeah, you yeah. Got a pseudonym? Yeah. Me. Yeah. <laughs> Mine's Will Far, Perry Far, TV. Kick, kicks Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just yeah. before we finish, because uh, upcoming is the uh, first monthly Super League Awards. Wowzers. Wow. Is, like, wow. Really Super League is moving forward. Is it a month old? Um, it's, it's, it's a matter now, of hours it? old at the moment. So just between, because I think it'd be a bit unfair to put Carl on the spot with this one. Uh, Mark, give me your northern try of the month, please. The Northern try, so it has to be scored in the North. <laughs> Sponsored by Northern, thank you very much. Um, the train company. Correct. I like the try by Bevan French when Wigan went left wing, left touch line to right touch line, <laughs> and he jinked back inside. That was a great try. John? You've not watched it. You what? just Googled that. You've not yeah. seen I've it. Go- what do you think I've Googled? Like, no, you've best not try this the morning. ball. It was whoever's on the left wing. No, it wasn't. <laughs> or left centre. It, it, yeah, it was. It was. Who offloaded it to Bevan French? Um, centre, King. Well done. Yeah, and then he jigged back. He came with his right no, foot. No, no, no. Go on, give me oh, your sorry, mine you're was, on the telly all the time. Mine was Matty Ashton's try against Huddersfield last week because 
You said what, like his calls here? No, no. What people don't know is Warrington's defence was as flimsy as fuck last year, right? And they defended 10 players before that. Carl, uh, then Matty Ashton plucks an interception out goes the length of the field. For me, that was like, a, right, we're on. This is yeah, a good moment. He's, he's been fantastic for us. I'll tell you the story about when we signed him. Have you got time for this? Go yeah, on. yeah. Great tale. So, uh, so Peter Williams was our, recruit, our uh, recruitment officer in the championship, George Williams' his dad. And he went looking at a prop forward at Halifax. Has he got a good nose for talent? Yeah, he has. Yeah. He has, mate. You sniff out a good player good. anyway. Yeah. yeah. Uh, anyway, so the perfect <laughs> report, it was any of the players that popped up that caught his eye. It's Matty Ashton. I said, okay, so we'll go, go the following Swinton? week. He was at Swinton at the time. Matt was playing at Swinton. Went back the following week. I said, I think Matt's played against Lever, mate. He said, this kid's got something. Went again. He said, Matt, I think you need to come and watch him. So I went to the Widness. He played Widness. I went to watch him at Widness. He was outstanding. He played fullback that day. He was, was phenomenal. Brave, pace, instinct. I was said, right, well, let's go for him. But I knew that Wigan were into him as well. Because at the time, Swinton had a link with Wigan, if you remember. He had a dual ridge partnership. Yeah, yeah. And Fee was like, Wigan want to want to sign him. So right, okay. So I waited till Wigan were playing on Sky that night. Wigan were playing Catalan. So I contacted whilst the game was playing. My game kicked off. Andy Mays at the time was uh, was the owner of Swinton. I think he's at Rochdale now, under. And I said, look, want to sign Matter? And he, could, and he was on holiday at the time. And he said, no, we've got a partnership with Wigan. They're into him. We've got to give them an opportunity. I wasn't accepting it. I said, no, we want, we want to make it happen tonight. And he come back again saying, nah, we uh, got to give Wigan, got to give Wigan a chance, so we offered a transfer fee. And he said, the replies were coming, do you mean, long, longer and longer. So he must be thinking about it. And he was still quite adamant after a while, saying, nah, got to let to, uh, got to go back for... Uh, was he on holiday, did you say? Yeah, he was on Had holiday. Had a few pints by the pool, I reckon. Possibly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Brilliant. And I'm watching the game clock. They get, got to get this done so, so we can have, not have the opportunity to go back and uh, put a spanner in the works. Uh, so the game's ticking down anyway so we're up to our transfer transfer fee and again delayed response I'm waiting for it it comes back and said if you throw a friendly and we'll make it happen so right boom you're on so agreed the deal agreed the transfer we can game finish they can't then obviously uh, respond <laughs> and we got Amazing. it on the line <laughs> <laughs> love that I love, I love that best. Andy, Andy gets Halliwell Jones chauffeur driven to each match now and the best seat in the house oh, it's, it's all sweetness over. sweetness for the deal that's it, uh, that's it. Um, John your Betfred coach of the month please I don't know that's a tricky one obviously Paul Wellens is the obvious choice but I'm not I'm not going to do that I, th I think he is because he's in the start of his career and World Club Challenge I think that that's massive but I'm actually I'm going to say Willie Peters just because of Hull KR's start to the season I think Hull's start to the season yeah. as a city yeah. Like if what we need is a competition is strong hull presence, both of them, and I think they've started so well. And a bit like with Warrington, I just felt great about Hull FC and Hull yeah. KR, how they've started. Willie Peters. So for me, Willie Peters. But really again. I'm gonna go for the obvious. Paul Wellens, um his first competitive game in charge, leading uh his team to victory in Australia, I think. It just left left where Christian Wolf um, started where he left off and yeah brilliant and finally Glenn's player of the month not a guy called Glenn, Glenn Glenn's vodka Glenn. Can, man, can we say vodka 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 yeah. what do you Glenn's mean vodka's not vodka. swearing I'm joking Glenn's player of the month someone's teetotal though we don't want to talk about alcohol we can talk about it Glenn's player of the month would be Glenn's player of the month would be Jack Wellsby why uh, he's the, I just because he's, he's been the best player I think he might <laughs> be Man of Steel. Do I sound silly? I don't know if I sound silly. One of the best players in the world. One of the best players in the world. I 20 seconds so. explaining why. Um, he's just one of those players. He turns up where you, he shouldn't be all the time. And, and don't get me wrong, he makes like massive clanging stupid errors. But I kind of love that he just gets back at it. He don't give a shit. Like he nearly lost, he, he lost England in the semi-final in the World Cup. It's not rattled him. He nearly lost since the World Cup Challenge. In fact, he won them it. Like, um, he won him it himself and and some of the things he does I just don't see anybody with an appetite to compete and skill and keep going back to the well when it's not working like that in English rugby for a long time 
and I think there's other compet. I think George Williams is, yeah. is outstanding. I think it's similar to Sam Tompkins and his competitiveness. I think yeah. in his resilience, and it's a, it's almost like a cockiness, an, an ignorance to failure. It's like I'll do this. It really didn't work, or this was terrible, mm. and it's just like, well, I'm going to try it again, mm. and I'm going to try it again, and mm. and and like I watch him and think, I, I love it, mm. and I enjoy watching him play. I get excited. Mm. You know, there's certain players. It's like I'd say that about Field and maybe French at Wigan mm. and, and Williams at, at Warrington and, and, and certain players, players around the competition that you just get excited when they get near the ball. Mm. And Jack Wellsby's one of them. Jack mm. Wellsby, best player in the world. Mark, player of the month is all I'm asking for. I don't one think he's the best player in the world. One of. One of. Yeah. I think George Williams has been outstanding for Warrington. I tipped him for Man of Steel last year and obviously that didn't go well because Warrington weren't that great. But I think he's been brilliant. I think his short kicking game is the best in Super League. When he's running the ball, he's so devastating because defenders don't know what to do because he's ridiculously strong and, and athletic and he's got a pass and a kick in him. Carl, thank you so much, mate, for your time. Really Pleasure. appreciate Thanks it. Thanks for having me. Great to see you. Uh, great stories as well. And two final requests. Oh, like me, like me, like me. Pathetic, but we do need you to like us because it keeps us in a job. So five follow star. us on Five, five stars five or star nothing. reviews only, like the Uber drivers. Otherwise, we will just delete the reviews. Um, but we only, Can we do that? We'll delete anything beneath a four. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fair. Should we get some feedback for John Wilkin as well? Good. Well, vote Congrat for John. Vote Congratulations for, hashtag, to John. Vote for John. Make, yeah. make this country great again by voting for John Wilkin at the uh, Sports Pundit of the Year Awards. That's not what they're called, but it's at the landmark. What's the official night called? Sports Journalist? Sports Journalism Awards. Sports Journalism Awards. Mm. John is up for Pundit of the Year along with the likes of Roy Keane, Alex Scott, um, Chris Sutton, no, not for me. Is Carol going? That'd be good. You can imagine. You should have given me two hour job. My mum to an awards yeah. dinner. You, you don't know, know what you're talking. You've seen that? Oh, I don't trust that Keith Senior. His eyes are too close together. <laughs> 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 you know, she never said that. <laughs> she, she would. She would. Just don't, no, sorry, that was Mark Gasnier. Don't trust him. His eyes are too close together. Well, I hope the landmark stops, stocks up on Jim because Carol is coming to town. Carol's coming no, Carol's to not time. going to the landmark. Well, maybe she town. wants to. If she, she goes do, there, she it'll be really weird. <laughs> yeah, it would be brilliant. I want to take Carol there. She's wondering what Joe... Alan Shear is crap. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not, I'm not going to encourage you to, to burgle John when he is at the awards. Cause yeah, because that is inciting yeah. the... The vitriol and exactly. negativity. All the that horrible you, people which we've been talking about. Really that we're not on. going to do. And and by the do. way, when I did encourage people to burgle your house, I knew you were at the house. So I knew that wasn't going to happen. Ha, ha, no. Ha, ha, well, it's jokes on you. Uh, when a death threat's not real, <laughs> they give it's them the not address. It's funny, isn't they it? give them the address. <laughs> uh, I'll give you the postcode later. Thanks for watching, everyone. <laughs> Bye for now. Bye. Bye.